CMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Well, welcome, everyone. Different night, different time. Same crew. Um, this is, uh, for those joining us, the Wednesday, March 27th, 2024 meeting of the Arlington Art of Fish and Turf Study Committee. It is our officially our 13th public meeting um, with, I think, two more to go after this one. So I'll give you a quick update right now before we get into more of the agenda. But um, I did speak to uh, select board last night on uh, a met, article, town meeting article 19, which would extend the timeline for us to report until I believe November. Um, we had a nice back and forth with the board. I gave them a full update on what we've done in a very short time, essentially reiterating what, what I said to them in the letter. They feel very comfortable with where we are. In fact, I think at least three board members said they'd read the draft report already. So kudos to them. Uh, and they all were effusive in their praise, um, saying that they were very impressed with the level of work put into it. So, um, you know, we're not there yet, but so far we're getting very, very good signs of encouragement from the people who are going to receive this report that they're very, very happy with this committee and the seriousness and the level of um you know effort and work we put into this project in a very short time span and they ultimately voted no action with the understanding that if i told them we we were on track to submit a report by april 12th and they said uh they were comfortable with that if for some reason we blew past that um someone could always file a substitute motion and replace the no action vote um, and they sort of said that as a, a motivator for us to wrap things up on time on time and I think we will um but yeah very very strong encouragement from town leaders uh, for the work of this committee um I think next order of business is the minute meeting minutes right Natasha <laughs> for our last meeting on March 19th yes so uh yes so we have the meeting minutes does anybody have any edits Okay. Uh, is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Okay. And a second? Second. Marvin. Okay. And we're going to go right down the list. Um, Mike? Yes. Leslie? Yes. Joe Barr? Yes. Jill? Yep. Yes. Sorry. Natasha? Yes. Marvin? Yes. Jim? Yes. Okay. So those are approved mm -hmm. seven zero. Uh, we can move I, on. I will note that there was also a lot of praise for the meeting minutes from people who have not been on our committee and not been able to attend our meetings. But I think more than one person said, I didn't feel like I needed to go to your meetings because the meeting minutes were so uh, extensive and detailed that I think one of the select board members said, I, I feel like I was at your meetings without being at your meetings. So um, high praise for Natasha on that. Uh, and also the fact that we've taped these and also made them available. So, you know, um, people have been watching who have not been able to make these meetings, maybe for whatever reason, schedule wise, it's been tough. They have been able to follow along and I'm very encouraged by what we did there and, and the, the response we got. Uh, are we up to correspondence received? Yes, we are. So I will go through the correspondence received. Uh, we received a... Uh... A bunch of um, information. So the first is uh, we have two emails from Susan Chapnick. Um, one was uh, pointing out some concerns about data that had been provided to the committee in a memo on 3-12-14. No, that's not 3-12-24. Uh, that was a typo uh, on my part from Phil Lasker. Uh, the second uh, email was uh, an article and it was uh, about environmental chemical exposure and mental health outcomes in children, a narrative review of recent literature. Um, the second email we received was from Beth Malofchik and there were six links to that. Um, the first was an article, PFAS coats skin of children athletes after playing on artificial turf. 
Um, there was also an additional link to the Guardian, the Guardian, I'm sorry, which um, references the findings of the article. Uh, and then there were a couple of peer documents, one being test results for preliminary study, uh, PFAS on, ha on hands of soccer players and coaches, grass versus artificial turf. The next peer article or document was uh, industry in a dither about PFAS in synthetic turf. And then um, another document from peer uh, public, I'm sorry, forever chemicals disposal is creating a health nightmare. And then uh, the final was an article. The final of the six links was an article, um, dermal uptake, an important pathway of human exposure to PFAS substances. Um, the third piece that we received was an email from Phil Lasker, and he had been forwarding some turf specifications from the Malden, um, Massachusetts Roosevelt Park project, specifically for testing of heavy metals and PFAS. And then the fourth was an email from uh, Mike Guildsgame, and he had two links with that. One was an updated narrative section from the Environmental Working Group, and the second was an updated chart, the wetlands value table. And I believe that was just because I had I apologize, uh, distorted it in the former um, reiteration, or I'm sorry, the, the former uh, packet. So that is all of our correspondence received. Jim, you're muted. Thank you. Um, that's great. Um, I think the best way to go about it the business tonight um, is to just go through the report page by page and someone can say stop if we get to something they want to talk about and if no one has anything to talk about we'll just keep moving along in the document until we get through all 20 something pages um, but before we do I just want to make two editorial comments or two maybe up you know administrative comments um, yeah. first you know, and we're going to have let this meeting inform where the report goes, but Natasha and I continue to do administrative changes to the documents. So formatting, citations, things like that, um, we're going to keep plugging away on and keep working on um, with the goal of getting a mm -hmm. final draft to everyone after next week's meeting, after the public input meeting. So whatever we send out to you on what would it be april yeah uh, whatever that friday is april uh, um so 5th? april 2nd is our next meeting so it's it yes it's so on april 5th we what we send you on that date i hope will be the final final report which we will vote on on april 9th there may still be a few little formatting things to work out after April 9th, but you know what we have then will reflect the input from tonight, input from the public meeting, and then you know we'll be in the end game. But in the meantime, Natasha and I are still working on sort of the appendix. We're still touching up some of the footnotes, um, things that are not substantive, and I hope don't everyone on the committee is just comfortable with us kind of doing our you know, ministerial uh, tasks, cleaning up. Um, if there's, a, we will not make any substantive changes until, you know, we receive input from this group and, and the public. Um, that's point one. Point two is, um, I think tonight it might be best, and it means we won't see each other as, as nicely, but maybe if we share the screen and go that way, mm -hmm. uh, Natasha. And I say that because we did send a document out I'm trying to get my timeline friday what day did you just send so very we late. sent that yep uh it's very late friday night uh you're gonna ask me the date jim i wasn't prepared for this no. freaking me <laughs> out and i were working on this thing she sent it out at 10 something we were still yeah. working on it at 9 30 on a friday night so uh so that was the 22nd it was sent okay. out on the 22nd to this group so we sent out to the 22nd what we included with the minutes on monday the 25th 25th was close to the same document, but not 100% because we did make some style changes. Uh, there were a few phrases that didn't quite work. You know, I, I can't say they were completely non-substantive, but there weren't many changes and there were a few things that just required some touching up. 
um, one or two of you pointed out some things that we might just have been sort of wrong. Um, so tonight, I noticed like Mike sent a draft and, and some of the things we're going to talk about are Mike's comments, for example. Some of the things Mike was asking to change have actually already been changed in that subsequent period from that Friday to the Monday. Um, not all of the things, but some of them. So if you see something, you're like, boy, this doesn't look like the draft I looked at. It's it's not too different, but we're going to use the draft that was sent with the minutes for tonight's discussion. Okay, I'll leave Jim, that there. I am not going to pull up the Google um... I think no. I'm going to just pull up the one that's on no. my computer and yes. go from there. Yes. And I don't think I'm going to make any edits to this. I'm just going to take notes. Is that yeah. okay with you? Take notes. Perfect. Um, I don't really want to edit in real time. Because no, I don't either. We also may not agree. We may have to discuss some things, yeah. that, you know, and, and reflect on them a little more. So just um, give so me one pull second. Up whatever was sent out on Monday, yep. this past Monday. Absolutely. Sorry for all the preliminaries, but I just want to be sure we're all on the same page when we jump into this. Okay, and then I'm going to share my screen. Uh, While she's doing that, I'll just say, the goal is to get through this tonight, however long it takes, page by page. Um, however, I do want to reserve a few minutes at the end of this meeting to discuss what this group's expectations are for next Tuesday's public meeting. Um, because I have some ideas and Natasha has some ideas and I really wanna be sure they gel with the ideas the rest of you have about this meeting. Cause um, I don't think it should be a public forum and a repeat of what happened last year. I'm not even sure it should be a traditional public hearing. I think it should be a one of our meetings where we allow more, more back and forth and input, but not necessarily a, you know, um, you know, get up and speak and say things for, you know, three minutes, four minutes, you know, things like that. And, and we don't say anything. So we, we should just talk, let's reserve some time at the end to talk about that. Um, okay, we have the document. Yes, can everybody see that? Yeah. Do you yep. see if I move my mouse around? Right. Yes. yes. I'm mm -hmm. going to apologize in advance because I get nervous and sometimes I do that anyway. So <laughs> just be like, Natasha, stop doing that. You're making us sick. Um, all right. So we'll just dive right in here. I'm wondering if I just can reduce this slightly. Can everyone still see that? This is just so we can try and stay on one page and see as much as possible. If I go down one more, is that helpful or not? I don't no. want to make it so no one can see it. Just that tell looks, me. That looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, don't make it too small. <laughs> I can yep. zoom it in on my own anyways. Okay. Yep. If there's any problems moving forward, just, just let us know. So um, we have the introduction. Uh, and so I know there were some wording um, changes here. Um, I believe we should draw attention to... Third paragraph. Third paragraph. Thank you, Jim. I'm looking at my stuff here. So the original um, wording, uh, some people pointed out, was a little, um, how should I say it? Whatever the wording was, was a little uh, harsher than it needed to be. It used terms like skeptics and yeah. um, detractors, so which I agree is not really, the connotations of those words aren't necessarily positive. So um you'll see the language, I think, without changing the substance of it, was changed to sort of language that's a little, um, where the connotations are a little better. So I just highlighted where that was. Um, I think that reflects pretty much everyone's comments. Um, and then another area, there were some environmental edits. Just this was more about the um, Artificial Turf Study Committee stated, so those were, had already been fixed as well as um, there was just a capitalization. I don't know where that is, but we'll, if that has not been, I don't think it's been changed, but we can, we can do that later. Um, there was a concern. They, to the extent people made comments about capitalization or quotation, yeah. we're, we're probably just going to adopt those. You know, I don't think we have to necessarily spend too much time on them tonight, you know, Every other focus is really on the sort of sub, more substantive pieces. Um, 
Okay. But you know, if you pointed something out, we'll, we'll probably adopt it if it's if it's accurate. Do you? Um, so I know Joe is not here, and Joe also submitted some some comments. Um, do you want me to just keep? Do you want me to? I think what he was pointing out here um, just had more to do with uh, the the wording in terms of regularly replacing artificial turf fields. Um, it kind of seems like it was yes. it was saying in one way or another that um, maybe artificial turf fields are um, are replaced regularly and they're not right. So I uh, objected to the word regularly because regularly implies yes. Well, regularly yeah. means different things to different people. He think. He was saying regularly, you know, if we're talking eight to ten years, five to six times a century shouldn't be considered regular. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I'm fine leaving it regularly. I'm fine taking it out, but I, you know, um, I don't know if there's a better word than regularly that sums things up, you know, or if it's just it's just better to take the. I mean, I don't know. What are people's sentiments on this one? I because wouldn't spend we just... a lot of time on it. Don't spend a lot of time on it. No, I mean, we'll take it out. We'll take it out. Then. Either way, yeah, it's fine. Okay. Well, I, I guess I would say it's, it's maybe we just state the, the the frequency, but I think it's important for people to recognize that like artificial turf fields don't last forever because I think some people think. Well, and I think we do in. that. I think we do that pretty strongly later in the document. Yeah. I mean, I'm hoping. Let's be honest. There are going to be some people just read the intro and the conclusion. And for those people, I can't do anything about it. I think anyone who reads this report will see that we spend a fair amount of time talking about the aspects of recycling and the frequency. And so I don't feel like this is our only bite at that apple. Yeah. Yeah. Does, does, does periodically work any better or, or do you want to just pull it? I could do periodically. Well well, we're going to, I mean, that applies to playing fields, whether it's artificial turf or grass. Correct. So I'm not sure what the point is. Okay. Okay. I mean, we are doing that, uh, whether it's, again, whether it's artificial turf, which again, will have to be, will have to be replaced or our natural grass fields need to be replaced. Do I, do we want to say regularly for those? I don't, um, but there is, a, there is a replacement cycle for playing fields due to the nature of the fact that they are played on, they wear out, and whether it's grass or artificial turf, there's a life cycle. So I'm not sure regularly yeah. really gives us anything. I think we can wordsmith that. Yeah, I'm also fine just getting rid of it. Okay. All right. We'll move Is, on. <laughs> are there any other uh, comments in this section? Okay. We'll go on to the scope of work then. Uh, there weren't, there were no real issues here. I think the environmental committee had separated out into bullets. Um, I don't, I think I like it the way that it reads only because I think putting more bullets is just making this document longer. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I'm not opposed one way or another. So any other thoughts on that? All right, let's move on. Yeah. Okay. Um, so now we get into access to youth sports. Uh, am I going too fast? Are people okay with this? Okay. Okay. Uh, there are just a couple of minor edits. I think um, the environmental group had made there was also a footnote that had been added um, that kind of described Tom Irwin, his website, and what they were about. Um, I'm not opposed to that. I think that that's probably fine. There was also another additional footnote that had been added by the environmental group, and it had to do with um, sort of explaining what sand injection was, and I don't have a problem with that either. Uh, any other discussion here? All right, we're good. We're doing great, guys. Right. Yeah, we're we're two pages in. We're two pages. Oh. <laughs> How many are there? Yeah, that's 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 like the baby sleeps through the night. You don't ever say it out loud. <laughs> I know. Uh, okay, did I skip? 
sorry, I think I skipped access to youth sports. No, I didn't. We just did that. So sorry. Okay, heat impacts. All right. Um, I know there was mention um, in regards to this section somewhere uh, in reference to, there's, there's a reference made to temperatures getting up to 140 and 170 degrees mm -hmm. and whether or not that needs to be clarified in terms of, um, you know, what, what area of the country are we talking about? Texas, are we talking about Massachusetts? Are we talking about Florida? Yeah. Um, What's that the was, location? Yep. Yeah, we can clarify that. Um, <laughs> and it may just be a matter of, of expounding a little bit more on what the studies that are cited say. Yeah. I mean, I, this is, uh, you know, just for those who, um, for the edification of the committee members. So if you remember, the health group had a heat section and the safety group had a heat yeah. section. And we had to combine them. And I think probably when we, I think generally we did a pretty successful job of that, but we dropped some things in order to make it flow better. And maybe that's one of the points that maybe got lost a little bit when we combined, because I think there was yeah. maybe it was the safety section, some just dis more distinction of, you know, different regions, different, different outcomes here in terms of. I think know. that was all me. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't worry. So, I mean, that, this might be just a matter of, adding back a sentence or two that kind of got cut when we merged the two sections. Yep. So yeah, I mean, if people are comfortable, I'm happy to clarify that. Yeah, it's clarification, putting in the parameters around. I mean, we, I know yep. we had quite a lengthy conversation in um, safety group about, you know, where is this? Is it Texas? Is it Florida? You yep. know, they regularly do rise above that. Um, yeah. Well, and, you know, the, the horror stories about, you know, cleats melting on turf, you know, those all were Texas, Florida, you know, California, none of them were New England. Right, uh, right. And so I think it, yeah, and, and I know that does, you know, if it's not clarified, then you have this image that that's true everywhere. And as we saw from the conversation with, with Sam, that's not what we're seeing here in Arlington. I'm just going to highlight this. That's where we were talking about. So yeah. um, we can add a sentence or two there. We can, we can, we can, we yeah. can clarify that. Yeah, I, I would just add that uh, about the heat uh, information that Arlington High School has that information. You might want to include some of that. Well, I think we do. I in think the next, we do. In the next paragraph. Yeah. Uh, all right. But it was it was it was almost like you get Weird. hit with the hot and then yeah that's what's that's what's striking it stands yeah. out i think it's just the context we can fix yeah. that yeah um okay so another uh sort of question i think that had come up here unless anyone else wants to jump in i don't want to hog just right. tell me to shut up anytime keep going <laughs> no you're okay. going great pitching a perfect game keep going yep. <laughs> thank you uh okay let's see here i'm trying to find it it was uh, i think it had something to do with um the way we were trying to word um about avoiding the five percent of the heat islands that may be identified um in the hazard that, mitigation plan yep tasha that's not till the next section because i you. have <laughs> yeah i'm i'm slowly losing my mind hold off on that one <laughs> thank you I tried to get all the notes down. Okay. All right. So I think otherwise, uh, I think that's that's everything that I caught. Does anyone else have any other thoughts on that? Okay. And you're right, Jill. It was heat impacts on the environment, right? Sorry. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I can take that one if you want. Sure. Um, there was a bullet that said something about avoiding the 5% um, heat island areas or hot spots in the Mass Ave corridor, and I felt like Never I felt like I was a proponent of that last time. But then we had a discussion, and I don't think we came to a conclusion because there was a discussion about then the new fields end up being on the west side of town and not on the east side of town. Um, and I didn't want something to go in the report that would then make it really difficult to redo a field on the east side of town um, if we weren't all in agreement about avoiding those areas. So I don't know if we need to vote 
or or how we come to a conclusion about whether this heat island effect should be because I think it comes up later in the bullets at the end of recommendations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we want to make that statement or not? I thought we had left it that we were going to sort of mention it as an issue that should be given consideration and, and try to avoid, but not sort of say don't ever. So I'm not sure if this is the exact right language, but it didn't, it didn't jump out at me as like, oh, this is inconsistent with where we left it. I mean, there's probably some more smithing that could happen well, to if if people want. First of the minutes, I think summed up very nicely, I think, where we landed, which was we didn't want a prohibition, but we, I think we said we'd prefer a, pref a, pre a preference not to cite them there, you know, but not necessarily a prohibition on just doing so. Well, it, um, it's a consideration, I think. I, that was where, you know, that it that it should be part of the consideration. Right. And I think it says it seems advisable to the extent practicable. I think that's pretty, pretty nuanced language. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I mean, Leslie, I feel like you think it goes too far. It's, well, I, I just think, you know, hot spots maybe is is what's giving me pause here. Hot spots. Um, I think it was, you know, when we were looking at it, I thought it followed essentially, you know, mass F, the asphalted areas. There's there's nothing that that suggests that that's what it is. Um, yeah, and, I mean, the hot spots were tended to be Mass Ave and Broadway and the, you know, right, the blocks, two or three blocks in from that. Um, uh, or maybe not, maybe, maybe it's not even two or three blocks, maybe a block in from there. Um, I mean, I don't think at the end of the day, we thought, well, I see David's hand is up. I think he's got some more. He, yeah, maybe he can. More commentary than I can offer. So David. Yeah, maybe he can clarify. Um, yeah, up by Thompson School, there's, I along Broadway, where, you know, another big corridor through Arlington. There are many hotspots and I know the field at Thompson there is one. There's it's also a hot spot? Yeah. And there's um sort of to the east of there, north and east, where there's a development out towards Sunnyside, like that stretch of Broadway that's kind of industrial uh, with the hospital facility there and that huge parking lot that's all. Right. So it's it's one. areas that are hot top, that are asphalt, you know. Yeah, that's not the only way that it becomes a hotspot, though. Like it, it has to do with a lot of factors, including shading versus exposure. It has to do with the density of development around it and buildings retaining heat when on a hot day. Um, you know, of course, paved surfaces are a big source of that, but so are, you know, constructed buildings. Um, even things like yeah. how the yeah. air moves through the space affect yeah. the temperature and so forth. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm struggling just because, you know, as you're saying this, and you're saying, you know, the density, you know, we're not, we're not going to go and recommend, I mean, with the, with the new MBTA requirements over housing, that we shouldn't, that the house, that housing shouldn't be, you know, the density of housing, how does that impact hot spots in East Arlington? If what you're saying is, you know, there are buildings causing some of this I feel like we take things out on the fields but there are other factors in creating as you said these hot spots yeah so, so to my mind i'm thinking this kind of language helps us to avoid 
making the problem worse. And just as a sidebar, I mean, I was in conversations about MBTA communities where we're advocating for similar things, making sure that we're not making any part of Arlington hotter with denser construction. Like we need to think through how we do development in a more environmental friendly way, including avoiding extreme heat. Okay, so I think it's, I mean, it's a consideration, but I don't know that it's a an avoid, you know, the avoidance is what I think it's a consideration. You know, one of the things that just came up in the chat was Thompson doesn't have enough trees. So then do you do you soften hot spots by putting in shade? Yeah, definitely. And okay. So I think there are ways of doing that. And I, I think that that's right. the language is suitable to that kind of an approach, you know, avoid installing them in those areas as a first order principle. Secondarily, if it's ill advisable or not practicable to do it elsewhere, then you look to mitigation as a as an option. Yeah, I think this goes back to what we were talking about, about site specific and sort of inspection and uh, identification of issues. And I'd also note that hotspots are in our hazard mitigation plan. So it's uh, it's not unique to this document. But I, I, I appreciate what you're saying, Leslie. And I think that um, the language where it says it seems advisable to the extent practicable to avoid installing artificial turf. I think that's pretty nuanced language that doesn't it's even the, say. Well, can we, it's before we get to avoid. Jill, I, I want to get to Jill, but Natasha, can you jump ahead? Yeah. Where? Oh, to the recommendation. To the, yes. That's what I was going to say. Maybe because we should worry about it there. I think you'll see that in the section that is. All right, everyone, close your eyes. Same issue. Yeah, I had yeah. the same issue there. Well, um, I don't think we do have the same issue there because I think the well, language. I think I did. <laughs> Sorry. You're doing fine. Good. So as you're scrolling, I think it. I think in the environmental part, maybe we don't need to change the language, but we need to come to agreement on the language here. Because okay. I think okay. here is the important piece. Otherwise, we'll right this there. Third, fourth bullet. Mm -hmm. Third, fourth. Mm -hmm. This one here. So, I mean, consider... that is Leslie's language. Okay. Here to. So. Personally, I have no problem with the prior language, considering this is the actual language in the recommendation. All right, if you don't think it's inconsistent. That is making a recommendation or suggesting a recommendation in that section before we're making the recommendation. To suggest avoidance is a suggestion. For me, I almost think that this is an implicit recommendation. I mean, if it's not likely to be an issue, then why do you even have to consider it? So um, from that standpoint, I guess I, I don't see the two as being terribly um, inconsistent with each other. I'll be very colloquial here for a second. So, I mean, I see that in the text part, it sort of says, maybe, maybe you don't put one of these in a hot spot. Um, you know, maybe you don't put one of these in a hot spot. Uh, and in the recommendations part, it says, if you're doing an analysis, this should be part of your considerations. Um, I don't necessarily see them as inconsistent. I mean, the first part is sort of saying, it might not be the best idea to put this here. Here it's saying, for a decision maker, make this part of your decision making process. Okay, but again, you know, the mitigation piece has fallen out, I think. Do you have recommendations for what the language should say in the text? Do you want me to scroll back up? Well, I, I just think it would be helpful to get, if, if Leslie has some suggested language, 
to consider well, that. I think it should, well, personally, I think that it should be consistent with what the recommendation is. I think it is. My but, language, the language I have an issue with is avoidance, is the avoid. So you'd like, like, consider as a factor? Sure. Yes. But I, I guess, the, and this goes back to the discussion we had before, I think the issue is that, again, from from the perspective of heat impacts on the environment, we shouldn't. We should not do this. We should not put artificial turf fields in hotspot areas. That's that's in that section. I think it's appropriate to be to say yes, we should avoid this. In the rec overall recommendations of the committee, I think we sh it's fine to say this is what you should be thinking about as you make decisions about where whether to do this. But I mean, I I, I think we we can't dance around the fact that as we've talked about before. Artificial turf fields have negative impacts on the environment. You can mitigate those, but you can't completely eliminate them. And I think we're asking for trouble if we try to sort of not state those things clearly, because I think then we will get feedback from town meeting and others that, oh, well, you didn't really talk about the true impacts. So then I don't think it's I don't think it's problematic to have a statement in the section on that topic that's a little bit more directive or stronger than what the actual overall recommendations for the entire report are. Yeah, and I, I'll speak personally. I mean, I don't think it's a great idea to put these in the 5% hottest areas in town. I agree with you, Leslie. There are other things I think probably shouldn't be there either, but that's not what this committee's charge is. It's about turf. No, and, you know, not. we saw this issue in Malden. We yep. saw yep. neighborhood opposition to the field at, uh, was, it, was it Roosevelt? Um, you know, it's not an insignificant issue for the neighbors of these of these places and the hot spots that they don't want anything that's going to make it worse. So I think the one issue and this that... suggestion is that there is no mitigation to that. A hot spot is a hot spot is a hot spot. If there's artificial turf, you know we we looked at the fact that the fill differential can be significant, potentially, that there are um, new technologies and, and things that are happening to the turf industry to acknowledge that, you know, these issues exist and they're designing and moving toward products that deal with these i know they're not there yet we all know that they're not there but and i and so that's why i can i can see yes that this should be a consideration and that if we were to look at this we should consider that it's a hot spot and what do we is there how do we mitigate and how do we lessen the impact in the hot spots. David and then Jill. Two things. I think first it's already a hot spot. And so mitigation will be lowering from an elevated place. And then you'll be adding a technology that likely will increase the temperature in that area. So additional mitigation will be required to offset that. So I, I think you start to run into sort of a chasing your tail kind of scenario where you might not be able to do enough to offset the increases seeing as you're already in an additionally hot area. And that brings me to my second point, which was my original point that as a matter of first principle, just avoid the area. And that gets us out of the conversation about mitigation, unless it proves impractical to do such a project elsewhere. So it's you can come back and have a, another bite at that mitigation apple if it 
is shown that there's, you know, not a good other way to do it. So I, I just, I stand by it being a, a good um, recommendation to first avoid doing harm, secondarily try to mitigate harm. Joe? Um, I think I think that the part of the conversation that Joe had last time that kind of surprised me was that there's an equity issue of where the where the redone fields are. Now, it would be wonderful if we could just redo Thompson as a as a great grass field. Um, but I think the worry I would imagine the rec department has is if the next field was to decided to be turf and then it's on the west side of town, then there's this like equity consideration. What I realized is none of our recommendations actually say anything about equitable access to good playing surfaces in Arlington. And if I wonder if that was one of our bullets, if that would force anyone using this guiding document in the future to do the exact argument we're having in a site specific way and and have a conversation about okay this would decrease the natural environment by this much but these kids don't have access to a field and i i think you can't really have that argument till you're talking about a specific site yeah we have nothing in our bullets to guide people to talk about equitable access yes i agree with you jill 100 percent yeah, uh, thanks. Yeah, I agree, Jill, as well. Uh, I'm just still unclear on uh, what a uh, recommended uh, a sentence would say early in the text. I think everybody seems to be relatively happy with this particular bullet in the recommendations, but I'm not sure how uh, folks may want to change the language in the actual text of the document. I, I, also agree I also agree with your point, Jill, and I, I think that goes to the conversation about what's practicable and what's advisable, mm -hmm. right? The, the way that it's written currently, I think, covers mm -hmm. that and allows for the conversation about equity and other considerations to be made in a larger form. You know, folks will have a larger conversation about what does it mean to put a field in X versus Y location? Um, what does it mean for access? What does it mean for playing time, et cetera, et cetera? So I, I feel like it's good as written. I think it's good up in the environmental section. I think when we get to these bottom bullets, we we need to add a bullet that reflects that. Because then, like most people are going to read the conclusion and what I realized in this conversation is the conclusion doesn't really say why why turf might you know be good for why why we would want to be careful that we're we're putting turf in where kids would be able to play I guess yeah I think a, a bullet this regarding to equity issue wouldn't be a bad idea at all. I think we need to uh, somehow craft the language, but perhaps not tonight. <laughs> I mean, I don't mean to stir the pot too much, but my comment's probably going to do that. Um, I don't really understand the equity issue that you that you're raising because there's an assumption there that everyone wants their kid to play on an artificial turf field because I don't it's, think it's the best and newest product out there, and there may be people in these neighborhoods that really despise artificial turf fields and do not want their children playing on them and then i i think that kind of blows up the equity argument right like i think it's about if you're doing anything. a field and the choice is to make turf and you we we don't want the fields all being redone on one side of town and so right. once you have it in the mix i think you have to consider where the fields in town that get redone are when you say redone, you mean redone in any way, shape, or form, whether it's a brand new. Yes. When you're, okay. Okay. When you're making clear. the when you're making the decision when you're going through this. Well, then we can clarify. So, that helps me. I think we can clarify that in a bullet then. Yeah. So, or what you sort of saying is that 
let's just take Thompson for a second. We know that it might be in a hot area of or a hot spot. Um, but what you're, what I'm sort of hearing is that you don't want the option to be taken off the menu, if you will, that just as if this was another field that wasn't exactly on in an area of a hot spot, artificial turf could be considered, but as a consideration, another area might not have a hot spot, but this area might have a hot spot. Is that sort of what you're kind of saying is like, I think I just screwed it up, but I'm just going to shut up. Yeah. Well, I Never think mind. like like any other project in town, like the bike thing that they're doing, like there should be a discussion where the people in that area can have impact input. And one of the considerations should obviously be heat islands. But I think access has to be considered as well. All right. I just screwed that whole thing up. So I'm just going to shut my mouth. I'm just taking I, I, notes. I, I think in terms of the equity issue, I would I would just note that it I think I it felt like you know, we were in the Heights and 90% of, you know, my daughter's games for years were at Magnolia. So I think that there's, you know, there's a lot of traveling all over town to do stuff. I um, know my son, my son's, and, all his soccer games are at Thompson. It's nowhere near yeah. us. But we're always at Thompson. <laughs> right. And, and so I think that it's, it's not like, you know, kids in one part of town are, are prevented from playing on the other end. Um, and thankfully, you know, it's it's like we're also not like, you know, some towns where, where mm -hmm. you know, like the area, the, the gross area of town is just enormous. And it's really incredibly hard to get from one end of, of a town to another. Um, you know, we're a little bit more compact than that, which is, you know, one of the things that always gets brought up in the zoning articles. So I, you know, while I understand that, you know, your equity point, I, I think it may not be as significant we hear it i was gonna say i we thought it wasn't it's either significant, marvin but but we do hear it on our okay. project when okay. when we're uh, assigning when we're assessing projects uh the projects that we're going to do why are you doing another field at that end of town and and we can flip it around you know if there are people who are opposed to artificial turf why are you putting all the artificial turfs on my side of town so, you know, it, it, there's there's the the inverse of that argument that says, you know, we we should we I mean, we need to look at it on a site by site, case by case, neighborhood by neighborhood. There may be some neighborhoods. And I think that, you know, again, what Jill was saying in looking at this heat island effect is a consideration but at a point in time and that should and that should help inform other aspects of the project as well again if if it is determined through an open equitable process that the best that the next best place to do a field over that would be artificial turf there would be a conversation about should it be grass or artificial turf what are the what are the recommendations what are the things that um impact a decision one of those would be it's you know p potentially the heat effect well if we're looking at thompson and it is in a heat island area then part of the project should mitigation should be more trees potentially more tree cover um what's the available technology at the time and how do we select materials that are the best at mitigating heat in that particular area of town if that's the conversation around a field decision over what the material should be for that field so leslie do i understand correctly that your concern about the information in the text is the word avoid that is 
and would it be acceptable do you think or better stated if we use some of the language that's in Natasha, could you go number? back up to the if Sorry. we use some of this so it should be considered or should be yeah some it should be a, a consideration i i agree that it should be you know a consideration based on the environmental impact yeah I see where you're coming from, Leslie. I respect your opinion. I'm just not sure I agree with it. I mean, that is what we ultimately come out in the recommendations, but I think it's tough in this section to sort of be laying out all this information about heat and then say, well, I'll think about it. Yeah, and I think the, the hazard mitigation plan also- But you is... could say that, but I just, it sounds, you know, well, think about it. I mean, we can say that. I, I just, I'd like them to do a little more than think about it. Seems advisable. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you, Jim, actually. I think this is couched in conditional language that's- I mean, this is pretty, I mean, having sort of drafted that, I mean, it's pretty, pretty, as Mike said, qualified language, you know? I mean, it's- uh, All right. But, uh, all right. I'll, you know, I'll give on this. There will be other <laughs> places that it'll come back. I may regret. I may regret yeah, that, that, may. that making that deal. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> boy. Okay. Well, we'll put a pin in it for now. How about okay. that? If I've, Natasha and I will make a note and we will think about it. But I've got the notes. Maybe the there's way. maybe there's some Solomonic wording we can find here, but. Jim, you're backpedaling now because you're afraid of what Leslie's going to come out with. Come at you with. Yeah, no, I'm right. My mind's racing ahead to. Uh, Who, where we go? The Faustian bargain I may have just made. Yeah. Um, All right, and and again, uh, and again, my, you know, my, uh, my got, my got it. It's the the avoid, avoid. Okay. You know, to, to avoid suggests don't even go there. You know, don't consider it. Don't go there. Don't have a conversation about it. Avoid it. But that's well, not to the, extent, to the, the language is very couched in conditional language. It doesn't flat out say you must avoid. Right, right. It says it seems advisable to the extent practical. I think that's pretty you can, you can tell a lawyer wrote this. <laughs> yeah. And, and and the couching, you know, it, it it's obviously couched. And right. the real sting is in the to avoid. <laughs> so I don't know. I think by the time you get to the sting, you're, you're already like, Ugh. <laughs> all right. Well, yeah. let's, let's move let's on. Not... I, we hear I'm you, Leslie. On. We will try. We'll try we, something here. We can and if on. we can't, we'll be honest about it. Yeah. All right. We're going to move on to the next section, which is, which is skin and bacteria. Um, I don't think there were any, I didn't have any comments here. Does anybody? Come on, you don't want to talk about skin or bacteria? No. Okay. All right, we're going to go on to uh, injury rates. Natasha, can I just ask a quick question? Yeah. There's like some stray yellow marks at the top. I know. Okay, you don't know what those are about either. It almost looks I think like it's, it's on the document. Um, okay. <laughs> it's on my end, Never I think. Mind. So. Yeah. Technology. It's not going to be in the final, <laughs> I promise. I think I might have hit like a highlight. And I don't know how to undo it. <laughs> so are we on to injury rates? Yes. All right, injury rates. I don't have anything, but then again, this was the safety group section, so. We beat this horse when in our safe, in our group. Yeah, I don't think there is anything in particular here um, that came up unless anyone else has anything. Yeah. Okay, so we'll go to the next one. Chemical impacts on human health and in the environment. Marvin, this was, I think, a section Marvin had originally mm -hmm. lead on with the health group. Mm -hmm. So I, I know one, I'll just go with what I know right now. Um, the environmental group had mentioned the word plasticizers somewhere in here. There was missing a quotation mark. Um, I did see that as well. So we will make sure that that gets fixed. That was just a simple one. I can't find it right now and I don't think everyone's sick. What was the word, uh, Natasha? Uh, actually, it was under, I know where it is, phthalates. 
I'm going to say it yeah, wrong. Yeah, phthalates, the plasticizer. I was like, I don't remember for that word. Sorry, I'm going to just scroll down for a second. Phthalates, yeah, that's, that's I know a exactly Scrabble. Is, that's yeah. a Scrabble word for sure. Yeah, right here. Yeah. We just, we missed one of the, um, can you guys see oh, that? The, we missed the other quotation. Yeah. Got it. So we can yeah. fix that. Oh, so um, plasticizer is whether I should have remembered that. <laughs> good, right? good, good catch somebody. It wasn't me. It was environmental. Uh, environmental, they had also mentioned that after, so I'm going to go to the six PPD. Who Queen knows? Yeah, I, always say mm. wrong. I just try to muffle it. There, so, you know, or Queen on or. Yeah. So there was, um, there was mm. a comment on, or a, a sort of like, I don't know what the right terminology is. Is it six PPD quinone or is it six PPD? And then it turns into the it's, it turned it turns into okay so we should take six so we should take quinone out okay so we'll <laughs> take the first quinone out but then leave it after is that right um, yes that is okay. correct <laughs> got it uh, and then when it says uh further discuss let me see here this is uh although hang on Add after when six feet be known further. Natasha, I'm just going to step away for 30 seconds. Yes, please. You guys are stuck with me. That's awful. <laughs> Not a problem. Well, <laughs> I like your optimism. Okay, so I'm going to have to go over to the environmental piece here. Actually, Mike or Joe, do you recall what this was? I just have add after. When blah 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 six QP don't further discusses in section chemical and phthalate runoff impact. Oh, I know exactly what it was. So I think after this, although six right here, there was a sentence um, or two. I think that you just wanted to refer refer to the section under. I think it was the chemical. Um, yeah, and I would take out runoff. that sentence. That's although a sentence can yep. come out, and um, with the sentence before. When exposed to ozone and oxygen, it transforms into 6 PVD quinone, further discussed in the section chemical and particular runoff impacts below. That's in the draft that we sent you. Okay. Okay. So we will fix this language here. Is that, does everyone, does, there, does anyone know what we're talking about? <laughs> yes. um, it, it's basically <laughs> just trying to refer people down to the next section where it's talked about more. Right. right. Okay, good. So that's that's a what good one. Uh, <laughs> everything, Jim. I just took over everything. Sorry, sorry. I just had to, <laughs> we, were, we wrote the whole recommendation. So. Sorry, I just had to say goodnight to my son. Um, no worries. So um, I'm, I got a couple more. Go, go on a roll. Go on a roll. All right. Uh, under hierarchy of controls, uh, there was some language suggestion here. Uh, that the environmental group had suggested. So it was worded um, in a way that says, it seems advisable to move away from crumb rubber infill. And I think the environmental group had said um, something along the lines of, uh, you know, the committee feels it is advisable uh, for infill. Yeah, it basically said, based on the current information review, the committee feels it's advisable to move away from crumb rubber infill. Yep. As to what alternative material is preferable, continued research will be necessary, et cetera, et cetera. So you wanted to just say, instead of it seems advisable to say, based on current current information and research? Yeah, the committee feels it's advisable. Well, I well, okay. I'll say this one thing. I tried th throughout the document until the recommendation section to avoid any reference to the committee. Okay. Um, and that's maybe why I changed it here to make it a more generic. I tried to sort of make it a passive voice. Um, yeah, that's fine. But um, I do think it's fine to say based on current, you know, um, current research. We, we can find a way to get there without saying yeah. that. But yeah, we can that's that. fine. Great. We can make it, yeah. We also don't want to overdo the term. It seems advisable, which is kind yeah. of <laughs> weak. <laughs> Underneath uh, this section, uh, I believe there had been another edit from the environmental group. Uh, okay. 
I think where it talks about um, recommending pre-installation testing, um, mm -hmm. it was just being more clear about an independent lab and then explaining why that is. So the reason why would be that, you know, once the product basically leaves the facility, it if it's tested on the field or on site, it could be contaminated otherwise. So it would be very sure. hard to tell. Um, I didn't have a problem with that. Okay. Is that? Yep. That's okay. what we're saying. Okay. It can be contaminated. Jill, we haven't missed any of your things yet, have we? No, mine were at the alternative infills part. Okay. Um, and actually, that. the crumb rubber part did get fixed. The, the it did. Uh, EPG quinone is not in the blades. It's in the rubber. Yes, we fixed that. Um, yes, although... Um, we didn't make it um, crumb rubber. We where just is said... That? Where is that? Let's go back up. Yep. Well, so I changed it to something because I was going to change it to tie or crumb rubber but then I want I know that was Marvin's section and I didn't want so I changed it to something that I, I'm artificial open to, turf I just, it doesn't sound in great some. I just said in some artificial turf I think there's a better way of saying that so but I didn't want to do it against Marvin because this was Marvin right. I think it, I think it was I, I think it was just a mistake I don't even think our original report said that I think that was just a like a copying mistake or something no no it was what was submitted from i went oh. back and looked it was what was submitted oh. from the health group it said an additional chemical that has recently been discovered in in uh, blades uh, green blades is and i i think you were right to highlight it jill it's not um yeah. don't marvin so i mean marvin are you in agreement it is the the crumb I, I would i would I, in truth at this moment i don't remember i'd have to go i'd have to take a peek and see so that's why I did a more generic, yeah. like in some artificial turf and not specify the part of it, but I'm happy to get more specific if, if someone can verify that. Can you just say in some artificial turf components, components or in some of the components? Yeah, we can say that. I, I'm yeah, fine with I, that. I, I would say it's, it's in the crumb because it's, it's, right. uh, it's added during the manufacture of tires. Yeah, I didn't see anything. So, so yeah, so it'll it'll show be in the, the blades, you know. Yeah, I think yep. it's only tires. Yep. I think then it's important we want to say crumb because yeah, yeah, I do too. Ian people does. don't have to worry about that. Okay. Well, if we can, if we we'll can fix that. Stand by there. We'll fix it and say crumb rubber. Okay. We'll okay. I just wanted to have this discussion. Yep. That's all. You know. Yep. Before we made a change like that. Oh, all right, people uh halfway through halfway but there's a lot to go okay i don't have any other comments on my sheet of paper here that i've tried to compare to make sure i get everyone's um so please jump in if you think i'm missing something are we ready to move on okay i take that as a yeah can i get a hell yeah all right hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right alternative infills so, so we I definitely Go ahead. I had a lot here. Um, the whole part that starts with Lexington and Milton mm -hmm. is confusing to me is that it talks about alternative infills and being natural, but like Brockville is not natural. Green sand is not natural. The natural ones are like the coconut husks. So I think we just have to be really clear of like of when we're using the word natural um, mm -hmm. because a lot of like, like, I don't think green sand, sand covered in acrylic is natural. Um, and I had a... I'm just so trying to find where Early that's... promises of these alternative, comma, natural infills. Like, not all the alternative infills are natural. So Maybe you can... delete the word natural. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we could say that. Alternative. We're just calling yeah, them. We're referring to them as alternative. alternative infills. And they're, they're alternative to the crumb. Correct. And then the, the first sentence says Lexington and Milton have specified plant-based infills. Milton? But then the second, yeah, it says Milton. But the second sentence yeah. there says, although certain infills such as Brockfield hold promise, like those are not plant-based infills. So we jump from like saying Lexington and Milton's policies to have plant-based infills, basically like <laughs> other towns like Malden and wherever Are you sure that's their policies i don't know i didn't write that sentence <laughs> I, didn't well, I think that's from the environmental group are we sure 
And first of all, I just changed it to several nearby towns because Milton is not really neighboring. That's that's fine. I think to say new several nearby towns or something like that would be fine. Uh, Mike, do you? I mean, I, I have not looked. I mean, we will site check it before we publish. But is is there policies for plant based infills or just alternative non crumb rubber infills? I'm actually, and off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you for sure. I think if we just call them alternative infills, I think that may, may be enough, which means anything but crumb rubber, essentially. Um, but I'm, I don't have that information at, at hand. But I think if you say several, ta several towns in the area or something like that have specified plant-based infills, I assume that yeah. came from some document or some contact information. I think you wanted to change it to several alternative infills. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll change from plant-based to alternative. Oh, wait, what are we talking about? Yeah. I mean, my only concern is that I don't, I don't really want to go down this road too far, but I might by saying this, I mean, these alternative infills, I mean, they may not be crumb rubber, but the more they're synthetic or paid of things that aren't natural. I mean, they may avoid some of the worst effects of chrome rubber, but aren't they still just... But we're, we're are we are <laughs> we referencing know. Turi's information, which and does just... exactly say that. And it talks about like the pluses and negatives of, of mm -hmm. the plastic ones. So I think we either have to have a lot more here or we have to be alternative versus crumb so so do we add like a discussion but i don't think we really have the data to compare the the natural to the sand because the sand has plastic too if it's acrylic sand so so i think like there just isn't enough information and we're saying from what we've gathered gathered so far any alternative is better than crumb but we don't know what alternative we would go with in two years or five years. Right. Because the technology is always changing. Right? Yes. And I think, but I, so I think that, uh, you know, alternative infills basically mean anything but crumb rubber at this point. Yes. So we're striking the word. Plant -based. I have it highlighted. Plant-based or natural. Milton. Okay. And just because it's natural doesn't mean it doesn't have some kind of impact, but. Right. Sure. And maybe, <laughs> Natasha, maybe there's a footnote that in a sentence or two, we can also clarify what we just discussed here. Yep. Okay. Uh, yes, actually, that is a note that the environmental group had, had mentioned there. So, okay. That's all I see on my comments here for alternative infill. Does anyone else have any? I'm trying to see what the. Do you want me to scroll up or down? No, no, I, I I'm, I'm looking. Oh, here we go. The benchmark study in this area. What is the benchmark study? So fifty-six. Fifty-six is. Uh, it's that study. <laughs> I can reference it. Uh, you want me to pull it up? Yeah, I mean, how do we know it's? Yeah. The benchmark study. I mean, from what we saw with Turi, there haven't been many studies. Can you guys see my new screenshot? No. no. Okay. No. You can only Shoot. have one screenshot at a time. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, I'm just going to put this in here. I'm going to share my screen, a new screen. When I did the Google search, uh, I just this is what's coming up. Uh, so uh, we'll have to uh, double check this. Can yeah. you see that? Yeah. It's error. error page. Yeah, not available. Yeah. Right. yeah. So we'll, we were going, so we have not done that yet, just so that everyone is aware. We have not fact checked everything because that's like, yeah, I mean, that's, down the road. that's one of the yeah. things we're going to do over the course of the next week, go through every. There's a lot of them now. There's 95 footnotes, but we're going to go through every single one just to be sure the links work. They actually yeah. support the thing they're citing. I mean, the traditional sort of site check. 
Yeah, I mean, the Tory seems to be uh, pretty uh, much uh, benchmark, but what? I know some people are concerned about it. Yeah, and and they don't, they, they had said that there isn't a lot of study that's been done right in the area of alternative infills so well, i guess i guess I, yeah i would question you know benchmark as as a as the uh, modifier here a recent study is it recent you know when, when was this study when was this supposed to benchmark study yeah we don't know it because it's now a link that isn't so Yep. So we'll, I think on our end, we can, we can work with, this is the environmental groups um, narrative. So we can, we can work directly with them to make sure we get the right citations there Yeah. and have the right language. Sure. Does that work? Yep. Okay. Any other thoughts on alternative infills at this point? So a couple of quick things, just to recap, we're going to do the benchmark study. We're going to review some wording there in the footnotes. Then we've got the uh, um, conversation that we just had about the plant-based and natural, we'll remove those as alternative. Okay. And not necessarily site specific neighboring, just neighboring. Yeah. Right. Thank you. I do have that written down. Um, all right, so now we're on to the chemical and particulate runoff impacts. All right. Sorry. All right. So there were just a couple of edits that the environmental group had made, just some, I'm going to say clerical, but they're fine. I, they've already been fixed, actually. Um, and then there was a, a note, I think, we can talk about offline, I think, um, just as we start to talk about um, chemicals of concern, I think, uh, notes, you know, chemicals of concern, uh, there was a note that all of that could be referenced somewhere else because it's already said somewhere else. So uh, we can. Yeah, that was the second paragraph there where it starts on yeah. emission fields. Right here. That is information that we've already had above, and I think it's useful to have it as a reference, but perhaps, in the, you know, as part of an appendix or something somewhere else, it doesn't need to be repeated here. Okay. So, Jim, I don't know what your thoughts are. I'm just going to leave that. So, I, sorry, can you just reiterate that again? Yeah, so what I've highlighted oh, but here. I got lost somewhere. Sorry. Yeah, so the containment, uh, contaminants of particular concern, um, the environmental, environmental group had highlighted in their edited version that- um, Put in a footnote instead. They could basically, yeah. I'm all about streamlining, so yes. Okay. That's fine with me. It makes the things better. Okay. I'd also say, just going back to the paragraph above, this is really more of a formatting piece, and we could probably just do it on our own, but I just want the committee to know they see a change in the next draft. I, I, I'm a, I'm sort of against hyperlinking things. I'd rather stick with a consistent footnote formation. So I'm happy to put footnotes for the, the next to Wetlands Protection Act and regulations in town bylaw and have the links in a footnote. Rather, I just don't want someone to to draw the implication that we're saying that. I mean, these are important things, but these are more important than other things that we haven't hyperlinked to. So, I would just put those in footnotes too. We're going to have over a hundred footnotes. There's no getting around this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I will tell you yesterday, um, one select board member said her favorite part of it, well, I'm giving away who it was, I said she loved the footnotes. She just thought the <laughs> footnotes were amazing that you, the links you could just, if you wondered what we were talking about, you just click the link and go straight to the source. So um, I'm very proud of our group for, for going that route. Um, Natasha, sorry, I broke your flow. You can keep going. That's okay. Uh, there had been another comment in here. I think the environmental group wanted us to strike out and I don't see it being a problem um, when there is a reference made to the Arlington Catholic field. Uh, basically, this, is, this concern is not theoretical. 
um, just taking that out and saying as observed. Yeah. I don't see a problem with that. Correct. Okay. Um, and then the other edits there were very minor and had already been taken care of. Um, we'll do. I'm just making notes on my thing. Hyper link. And then environmental. Okay. And start with a observe. Okay, we're all set. Okay, and then there were some um, some issues that were that were raised by the safety committee, and I I don't really know where these are, um, but I guess I can just sort of do. do you want me to just, I'll just run down the list. So there were questions about you know um, where are the life of freshwater fish um, jeopardized in in town, uh, the Arlington the. AC field, um, is that something that can be designed to mitigate the crumb rubber? Um, there had been a uh, mention of um, danger of runoff from natural, oh, there had not been any mention in this section about um, danger of runoff from natural grass and pesticide or um, synthetic fertilizer treatments. And then, um, you know, questions about the impervious surface. And I think we're just going back and forth about this because, um, you know, DEP is is putting a definition out there, but I think industry is also saying, but it is, it is or could be considered permeable. Um, and then discussing, uh, nope, that was, that was it, sorry. So those were some concerns raised by um, the safety committee. I don't know if anyone has any comments on that or, Thoughts. Well, a related comment I wanted to make mm -hmm. was um, it dawned on me after submitting the draft that there was something we talk about a little bit, maybe in the chemical section, but we should say maybe a little bit more on, which is I, I don't think we emphasize enough that PFAS is everywhere. I mean, I'm just going with PFAS here for a second you know, but that a lot of these chemicals are everywhere, particularly PFAS. And so when we're talking about PFAS runoff, yes, there could be PFAS runoff from, from an artificial turf field. It can also be, but you don't know, is that from the field? I mean, it's from the field, but it could also be from the uniforms of the kids who play in the field, the cleats of the, I mean, PFAS is literally in everything we do and wear and live in. And so I don't know if we've, conveyed enough that yes, there's a PFAS concern, for example, if we're talking chemicals from artificial turf fields, but that to Leslie's point sort of about heat, it's not the only thing that's causing PFAS runoff. Um, and I wouldn't change our our general, our general um, points we're making about runoff, but I think it's good to emphasize that there are other sources contributing to this too. So um, yeah. it'd be nice if we can control this one, but it doesn't necessarily solve the problem completely because it's coming from lots of other places too. I, I we, think that, that, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, well, I was just going to say we haven't, and we haven't tested our grass fields to see if the soil that exists there contains PFAS. Yeah. We, we don't know. And we should we should be honest about that, right? Our our the soil at our grass fields potentially right. contains PFAS. Right. I and I think I think it most likely does. I guess for me, one yeah. of the questions would be that you know what is the difference in runoff between a natural grass field and turf, um, and and to Jim's point about it being everywhere again, um, in a sense, this is like the heat thing. If if you've got an existing problem. Um, you know, do we want to add more of whatever the issue is? Um, you know. But to, to but, but I think I think yeah. I, I'd be interested in, you know, some kind of probably I don't know if there's any documentation about relative differences in runoff between um, artificial turf and grass. And I don't know if the environmental environmental group has any data on that. I don't know that we've actually I'm not trying to put you on the spot, Mike. <laughs> So, I mean, we know what inputs that, um, are to no regular turf uh, in terms of what the town uses, uh, but I don't know that there have been any tests or assessments of what the actual runoff is from uh, 
from natural turf fields. Again, uh, and again, is it site specific? Yeah. To a certain degree? It would be. Yeah. I mean, the, the runoff at a field. Uh, up, you know, what's the runoff at Robin's Farm versus the, you know, runoff the, at the newly constructed herd? All right. um, they, they may be different. They're going to be different because you have different <laughs> site conditions. Exactly. And which is why we emphasize, I think, in this report very accurately that site conditions are very important and have to be considered. Yes. But I would say that um, just in general, that most grass fields are going to be more permeable than uh, artificial turf fields. So that's part of a site issue. Yeah, I think that goes back to what was being said about the design of an artificial turf field and whether, I mean, the runoff can be designed for 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 capture you can capture runoff in a in an engineered way and i know it doesn't necessarily you know percolate into the soils beneath because there aren't really soils beneath but if we're just strictly talking runoff you can mitigate runoff in an engineered way Right, that's the bioretention uh, basins. The... Right, the swales, and and you can, we we do that sometimes in you know we put swales on natural around some natural turf, sure, as well to capture runoff. Right, stormwater particularly. Yeah. So. <clears throat> This is this is where I think we're having a little bit of um, issue around the the notion that you can't capture runoff and that you know the, the permeability of an artificial turf field and a natural grass field are different, but again, site specific, and you need to look at the conditions of the location. Right. And how you design it and build it. Right. So, and as we talked about it as well, the cost is part of that whole site assessment. Yeah. So it's just not making blanket statements about, and, and that's, I think, where the concern comes from. And the question was, you know, DP, DEP is considering the change. However, have they implemented that as the definition? That language has not been approved as yet, as far as I know. So I think, I think, and I think that that was made clear. If not, it should be that it's under consideration, but that's not. Oops, bear with me. I'm going yeah. up. I think it was in there. I think it is. That it's under consideration. I'm just looking for the language here. Yeah. I think it's the next paragraph right at the bottom. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah there yeah. might be in the next section under, because this is still the chemicals, right? <laughs> yeah, the uh, stormwater uh, section talks yeah. about, uh, yeah. just to, about that. All right, so let's stay with this for just the next slide. Let's just I... stay with this for one second. Um, all right, I'll, I'll go down actually because it's I think no. it's right here. Right, that was from December. I don't know what the schedule is at DEP to uh, implement the changes or not. I do think that there is there somewhere in here that it says that this has been a debate about the permeability. Yes, just, just below it says it's a subject. Yes, of okay. 
Yeah. So I think we're clearly. Yep. I think we've made that pretty clear. Yep. I'm okay with, with that. Um, so I guess I, a couple questions here from, from the safety committee here. Um, so I heard Jim say that maybe this is a place where we also want to, uh, talk about, did we want to talk about the PFAS here? Well, just one no, footnote. No. I, my understanding okay. is that DEP is going to make a decision on this language in April. Um, and it seems, at least from what I can gather, it's likely to pass. Um, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't think we're saying to take it out. I, I think what we're just saying is, I think we've made it pretty clear here, no matter when this gets released, that you know, there, there has been this debate and I think we've made that clear. I don't have a problem with that. Um, relative to references on runoff differences, I'm not sure in terms of, you know, a natural grass field versus an artificial turf field, if that's even something that we can get at this point. Um, what are others? It's too site specific. Yeah. To get general information, I think. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. yeah. And we, we did try to acknowledge that, you know, a, a poorly maintained natural grass field can also not be great in terms of managing stormwater because it becomes a sort of hard pack surface. And I think Yeah, that is mentioned. Yeah. So we tried to try to find a sort of it's not yep. it's not a clear yes, no, black, white decision. Okay. And are we gonna talk at all about the natural grass use of, of pesticides or synthetic fertilizers here. That's what was brought up by the mm -hmm. safety committee. I don't know. Um, well, I think that fits into my larger point. I, I was talking about, okay. but it, Sorry. Can be, it fit into a larger point mm -hmm. of like, there's all sorts, I mean, I think it fits into, there's all sorts of junk out there, you know, yeah. and things from artificial turf are one set of junk and there's some junk that's already out there, you know, and, these are scientific terms you can tell I'm using, but you know, uh, the point is we can clarify it. Just a little, you know. I mean, I, I didn't get in, I did, you know, I relied on the environmental group for this stuff, but you know, I remember in the skin and bacteria section, you know, testing showed that actually <laughs> on outdoor artificial turf fields versus outdoor grass fields, there was actually more bacteria found in the outdoor grass fields than in the outdoor artificial turf fields, you know, I mean, so there isn't always an automatic assumption that there's more of something bad in artificial turf than what might already be there in the natural turf. Um, and we can, I yeah, there's a lot of nasty stuff in the dirt. Yeah. <laughs> like not even chemicals. Just Well, I mean, on that point about the bacteria, I always assumed, you know, I never quite said this, but I always assumed it tied to the wildlife issue. Like the wildlife feels very comfortable on the turf and is, doing their business on it, whereas they don't on the artificial turf. And, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, so, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of junk on even natural grass. It's not mm -hmm. always all and the good. ducks. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll ducks. just point out that if, if you look at that proposed rule from DEP, it includes compacted gravel or soil as something that they might also yeah. classify as, as impervious. Uh, impervious. So. Okay. I think I said impermeable. I might have used the wrong term. I'm sorry. Everybody. Either, I'm either just... one is fine. Either okay, one's good. Fine. <laughs> potato, potato. Um, so we're at 8:30. Yeah, I think somewhere we can clarify these issues about pesticides, existing PFAS. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm. I think there's the, the there was somewhere already, maybe in one of the chemical sections where we talked about PFAS sort of being in a lot yep. of things already. Yeah, I think we can sort of expound on that point that there's just a lot of I don't know. I, I feel like there's a way with a sentence or two here or there we can yep. put a finer point on this. Okay. So are we ready to move on to stormwater? I am. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's 8.30. Can we power through? Sure. All right. Well, yes, because I unfortunately I feel like we do have some tough, we're yeah. saving some of the toughest things for last. So. All right. So stormwater, um, any comments here? I think that this is what I'm just going to do going forward is we're just going to go through and if there are any additional comments here. I think we already talked about um, impermeable. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Any other questions or thoughts on, on stormwater? Okay. 
moving on to climate change. Uh, I realize that uh, in this document, there says here footnote number 18, that is not referenced to anything. So I will fix that on my end. Um, that should be the next reference, which I think is 76 or something. Um, mm -hmm. Going up, I know there, the safety had had some, some questions about um, some of this being more subjective and wondering if there are more references that could sort of maybe put in here to, I don't know, maybe back up the, the information. I think where there weren't so many references, it was maybe question, questioning, um, you know, like carbon sequencing, se sequencing, sorry. sorry. <laughs> it's late, I've been here since 7.30. Um, yeah, so that in there, like if, if this is a definition coming from somewhere or what it is, can we, can we throw something like that in there so that there's validity to it? Um, I don't think that that's a problem. Anyone else have a thought about that? We have a request for a few citations here. Yeah. yeah. If there are any uh, references you need help with, please let me know. And if we can help, we will be glad to. Okay. So we'll do the that. <laughs> All right, we're getting there. We're we're going down. Cost comparison. I don't want to hear anything. I tried to. I tried really hard on this. No, you can tell me everything. A <laughs> uh, few things. Um, Joe, thank you so much. Uh, Joe Joe Barr, I believe you added uh, a paragraph about the two major sources of funding, and I'm yes. I'm totally good about that. Um, basically, he was just talking about um, CPA funds as well as capital and that CPA funds would no longer be applicable for this these types of projects um, with artificial turf, but capital would be the only... Joe, did I get that right? That is not correct. I might have it wrong. <laughs> Where's Joe Barr? Right there. Joe, was that your note in there? Yeah, Sorry. that's what... I mean, that's what we've always been told, that you can't... you cannot use... CPA funds for the actual turf field itself. And that's- No, I just for, that for the carpet. For the actual field, yes, the field surface. Although there's debate, there's debate about whether the, 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 the I will describe it as a, and run around what I think was the legislative intent, um, but whether those are actually legal, but people have certainly done them. So, and but I, sent the to, I sent the references from the CPA co coalition. There's never, there has not been a lawsuit you can use CPA funds to do the earthworks and for everything except the carpet. Uh, yeah. That includes the infill? That includes the infill? That's up for, that's because, subjective. Like I would say what I could find was basically it's all the, the, the actual, the field itself, like the playing surface and everything associated with it is not eligible for CPA funds. Given where I mean, all this we, is going, we, Leslie, I bet I'll bet money within two years there's a lawsuit on this. I mean, well, I would say that lawsuits with lots of different things, but um, I mean, the, the we can't project the future, and and that's not what we're intending to do here. I mean, we've looked at this; it's been discussed, and again, there have been. Several projects done throughout the community since the inception of CPA that have used CPA funds for the projects and then other sources of funding have been used for the actual artificial turf component of the project. Because that's only one component of doing a project. I'm just pulling up the language that is in here. Can can everyone see that or no? This is in the report, our report? Uh, no, this was the edited. This is what um, was added to the environmental. This is the just the paragraph I'm talking about um, that was added in here. Two major sources of funding for parks and playgrounds. Can you guys see that? Yes. Yeah, I guess, and to Leslie's point, I mean, it may be worth clarifying that it, the, what I wrote was the fund these projects. It may be more fun that portion of these projects or something or fund the field, the actual field or something like that, just to be clear that yes, there is a, All right. there is yeah. certainly, there certainly have been projects 
done in the Commonwealth with CPA funds where the but the where the the, the field itself was sort of pulled out and paid for separately. I mean, I can send. Uh, I can send. I have the, it along the CPA language. I think I have that. I was actually just looking at that the other day. Yeah, I I did send that along early on. Yep. I went to the I coalition. Think that would be helpful to cite here and you know provide the citation for like yes. the context. I, oh. I'm I gonna just clarify everything. I'm gonna stop sharing this part of it. We'll figure that piece out. I'm gonna go back to sharing the other ones. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's okay. Good. Don't worry All about right. it. Uh, so you'll clarify that language and uh, citation. Have a citation for that. Yes. Okay. Do you need me to resend it? Do you or do no? You I have it, Leslie. I'll um okay. see what I have and then I can I'll circle back with you if I need to. I'd also check. I think there was something came from. I don't know if it's the, the CPA committee or something that Clarissa may have sent along to you, Natasha, at some point about, okay. about that. So you might want to check that out. Well, there was a letter that she sent on her own behalf. Yeah. But not on behalf of CPA. That's yeah. This has not been a discussion that CPA has had. That's right. That's right. Clarissa sent that for so that in her. Yeah. Personal capacity. So I have a note to myself to check Leslie's um, email. I actually just saw it too. So um, I have it readily available. Okay. Any other talking points here um, that we want to talk about under cost comparisons? Well, I just raised the issue. I don't know if it's important or not, but we mentioned Ian Lacey many times in this report. Mm -hmm. and I if some folks may have some concerns about that. Um, I mean, he, he seemed to came, come across as a pretty neutral uh, individual in his expression, but um, I just think we leaned on his information pretty strongly. I'm wondering if there may be some issues with that. If not, that's fine. Um. I'm comfortable with it, uh, and I'll tell you why. Um, I think Ian was very honest and upfront with us about his role. And I feel very comfortable that, I don't know, maybe I'm naive here, but I view him as a, a neutral on these subjects, of not a very knowledgeable subject matter expert who's genuinely a neutral on, but on the discussion between turf and artificial turf. Um, and anyone who watches his presentation to us, which the presentation is posted on our website as well as the video, I think would come away with a similar opinion. That's fine. I just bring it up as an issue that may may pop yeah. up. Well, someone may say, oh, he's an industry person. I'd say, go watch the video. Go watch the presentation. Right. And come back to me. I mean, you know, we're going to get a lot. There are going to be people who have not followed this process, who barely read our report, who are going to be cherry picking things and you know because it may not align with where they think we should have come out that's right. fine um i'm only concerned about people who have been following this very carefully read every word of this report have attended most of our meetings and get it so um everyone else is just you know i don't know i don't think your criticisms count for much when you haven't really followed our work but I mean, point well taken, Mike. It's it's something for us to be aware. Of. Just to be keep aware of it. That's all. Mm -hmm. And I did hyperlink here, um, Jim. So I'll I'll remove that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I couldn't find it. Anymore. <laughs> uh, all right. Where are we? Um, so now, if we're done with that cost comparison piece, we're going to go right into. Importance I just have one, yep. one other note that I thought I'd bring in, yep. uh, given that there are all these tables, and I think it might be helpful maybe to, uh, that the life cycle cost for 10 years maybe be summarized from all those tables, you know, just to simplify it a little bit. Uh, I don't know if that's feasible or reasonable to do, but there's just a lot of tables that people may find daunting. Yep. 
that is a great point. Anybody have any recommendations on how to go about doing that? Well, we might be able to help with that. I'll 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 talk to some folks and see if we can easily pull that together. Okay. Anyone else have any concerns about that? Does, do you think that we should try and consolidate the tables or keep them as they are? Are they problematic? Well, it's just really more a text summary of, of what's there to yep. talk about the sort of the average okay. numbers for a 10 year, just so people yep. have some sense. I think we can help work on that. Okay. So let's move into importance of field maintenance. Um, I think there were a couple of comments here just about wanting to make sure um, there are comments made. Uh, so I think that the point here was that, uh, you know, the safety group had, had wanted to make sure that um, it was clear that a organically maintained fields won't give any additional hourly usage. Um, they really need to be rested. So that was... And Natasha, that's that's my second. I, I have two points that I that I Perfect. wanted to bring. One was the I've already mentioned about sort of other other issues, other chemicals, other PFAS fertilizers, that sort of thing, which is more of a global comment. The other is, and I think this is because Jill brought this to my attention. You know, trying to be very honest and clear with people who read this report about the fact that adding more adding an artificial turf field, even just one or two to the mix of fields in Arlington, does not necessarily mean there will be more playing hours for users of the fields in Arlington, because we have to be honest that we part of our recommendations are to also rest the existing fields more than they have been. Um, I mean, part of our problem is that these fields are not being properly rested, they're being overused. And so the addition of an artificial turf field would simply take the pressure off those fields. It would not necessarily expand the number of hours, it would just move the number of hours, playable hours. Um, and in the shoulder seasons, probably add a little bit more. Um, but Jill, am I mischaracterizing right. this? It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't, because like someone from that hadn't been at our meeting said, couldn't you just, when you switch to artificial fields, you're going to get X percent more playing time because I read this before. Yeah. And I said, that would be true if we had, if we properly maintained our fields and we didn't play on them 24 seven when it's not raining. <laughs> and so really the only gains we're getting is mm -hmm. like, Right now, when the kids can't play on the fields yet, and other towns are practicing on their turf fields, so March and November, and then we get the advantage of being able to hold games in the rain, so then you don't end up having to double up on practices. But we're still not adding the amount of, we can't add like five more soccer teams, because we're not magically getting another field that didn't exist before, because we don't have any land. So, so I think there's a misconception that just by going to turf, you can expand your youth programs. The only way we can expand our youth programs is if we get more land. Yeah, we need more fields. And then I think people have <laughs> or to- Or you just don't care about, or, or sorry to interrupt, but Joe, but, or you just don't care about the grass fields and you just continue to run them into the ground even with additional artificial turf fields. Right, so if, if we're, so turf may allow us to maybe rest grass, but like really realistically, if we were to move to better maintain grass fields, we're actually going to cut our programs. Like there's just no way we can like, like people just say we should organically maintain fields. We would be like throwing money away if we tried to do that because <laughs> we would just be putting great stuff on the field and then the field is overused and it doesn't matter what you're maintaining it with. If it's overused, it's not going to grow. So I don't know how we make it clear in this report that if we want to have good fields, we have to cut back on the usage of fields. And that that's why you can't compare like organic to artificial turf or that or that's at least a consideration. Turf 
we're either going to throw money away on or, an organic field or take away playing time or the alternative is a, an an artificial turf field would allow us to have the same amount of playing time and i don't know how to say that in a way that people who don't understand the usage issue would actually understand it maybe leslie can help <laughs> oh, it de it's going to depend on what our ultimate goal is i mean the, the organic non-organic maintenance i think is it is a separate issue for our you know the natural grass fields and and that's you know that is not going to get us more as jill says that's not going to get us more playing fields or more playing time because you're still going to have to close a field that is at risk of damage especially in the spring in the in the wet weather and and the wet conditions so you get more playing time you get with the artificial turf we've had a recommendation to rest and renovate rest and rotate fields since the 1990s and we've been unable to do it i'm not sure with the capacity issue of the fields even if we were to add an artificial turf field it's it's kind of a philosophical are we adding the field to allow more use by our youth or are we adding an artificial turf field to allow us to better maintain and rest our existing fields our gra natural grass fields and i'm not sure we've had that level of conversation related to this I see David's hand up. I guess it's a clarifying question. It, it might not be significant enough to warrant full thread response, but uh, I keep hearing this conversation about the need to better maintain the existing grass fields in town and that being related to the concern about playable hours. So it feels to me like the organic versus synthetic management regime is a bit of a red herring when the issue at hand is like what uh, Leslie just described. It's like we don't have the capacity to rest fields with the demand that there is we're privileging the demand and revenue over the maintenance of the fields and therefore the fields suffer and then our lower quality and we wind up in a conversation like this one. So is there, is there a distinction that I'm missing there in terms of the organic management versus synthetic management being significant to that discussion about management or is it really just about the lack of maintenance on grass fields regardless of the regime there i yeah. think what you're saying is correct it is a bit of a red herring i mean organic versus non-organic maintenance can be an independent decision really right it, it really is it really has a lot to do with municipal budgets and you know the the toxicity of the non-organic i mean if you want to move to an organic which is considered more environmentally friendly for natural grass fields i mean that's a that's really a decision dealing with 
DPW and budgeting concerns because it's significantly more expensive to do organic maintenance of natural grass fields, but that doesn't get us more playing time. And that's where we come from on a on the recreation side is giving access to more youth in the community. We're not adding fields. We haven't we haven't added a, a field since McLennan. Aren't there two new fields coming in this year, the artificial turf fields? I'm glad you brought that up. Those are school department fields that are under the jurisdiction of the school department. They charge for the use of those fields. Those are mainly for the use of the Arlington High School community. <laughs> the greater community has limited access but recreation is charged, the recreation department, the town recreation department is charged something like $100 an hour to use one of those artificial turf fields. Wow. So again, we think that we're adding capacity at the high school with artificial turf. And we are to a certain community but it's it's not open access to the commu the entire community of Arlington there's a cost to it that many of our i mean we do charge fields there are field fees that organized sports pay but it's not $100 an hour and, and that goes toward the maintenance of our natural grass fields. And again, the recreation department oversees only natural grass fields. That's all there are. So for our youth and for the capacity issue, if the youth want to play on the high school fields, they can do it outside of the time, I mean, the First priority, obviously, is, is the high school use of those fields. And, you know, for example, when, when we had Sam, she talked about how um, she has, they have, the high school has athletes that practice and play on artificial turf and on natural grass. Well, the natural grass fields that they use, Magnolia, Thorndike, various others in the town are community fields. They're not school department fields. So they do spread out and they do have priority. I would expect we'd see some of those athletes coming back and some of those teams being able to play at the high school, but those are not necessarily at a time. You know, we talk about 24 seven, you, you can't get you know, for the for the most part, our youth sports are coached by normal, regular folks that have day jobs. So you're trying to pack in practices after work hours, after the the school times of use in the evenings, and then of course on the weekends all day. That's where we have as much of you know as much capacity 24 seven as we can, but we don't have lighted, you know, we don't have a lot of lighted fields. So there is a limit to the times that, that those fields can be used. And again, we may offload some of the high school use at some of the grass fields, but that's not necessarily the times mm -hmm. that you're going to fill with youth soccer or youth um lacrosse or any of the other potential youth sports you may be then able to allow some of the community uses like um some of the ultimate frisbee frisbee groups that have been trying to get use of fields that that we don't have 
the capacity to even allow them to use fields. So, so that's where, you know, again, you, we've got this notion that the high school helps to solve the problem, but it's, it's, it's a little bit of a mirage. Well, I don't know what we're to do here then. Um, I, mean, I do think we need to be a little more upfront about, or I, I hesitate to be honest, but a little more, more upfront about the idea that the fields need to be rested more. And so even if you added an artificial turf field to the mix, it's not, I mean, it could be something as simple as it's not just adding player playable hours it it may just be allowing an opportunity for the fields to be as they should be uh better rested but that's still an important purpose i mean i don't want to dismiss that i mean it's still quite helpful it's just you don't increase the pie well maybe you may, that's you may what... not depending on the decision about resting fields Maybe that's what we need to put in this, the beginning of this organic and non-organic maintenance is sort of a qualifier of if we are able to have a better rest period of the fields, then we should start a discussion about how the fields are maintained. I feel like it's sort of silly to have this discussion of organic versus non-organic when, when the fields are like I just feel like it's a waste of taxpayer money to to say that we want to make that shift when like the grass isn't going to grow because because they're overused anyways so how do we get this how do we get people to understand that like switching we have to solve one problem before we solve the other and I think maybe artificial turf is a part of solving the first problem if we if it does allow us to do a little bit more resting um and i was thinking of that the whole thompson thing before imagine if we could put an artificial turf somewhere and that gave us enough ability to like really grow a good organically maintained field at thompson but i don't think in reading this i don't think people understand the issue including people in the town who are very invested in this and so how do we how do we convey the real issue that Leslie's talking about to those people? So you're suggesting we have some kind of introductory disclaimer in a sense, uh, talking about the that issue that you just mentioned, Jill. Yeah, and I don't know if it's before this organic and non-organic or before the previous part or the end of the previous part where we talk about maintenance. And it's not like we could get more money for maintenance and we still don't mm. solve the problem because we still just have over and over. Well, it may just it may just be a few, like you said, a couple of introductory sentences in that paragraph. But before I do that, I mean, is this group? Maybe it's just maybe. Well, does this group agree that our field should be more rested than they currently are? If that's going to make them better playing fields in terms of time uh, they're available and in terms of the quality of the turf and so forth, if if resting will help with that, then I think that's what we'd like to see. But I don't know if it's feasible. Well, I don't know that it's anything that we spent a lot of time studying. I didn't know that that was, I mean, we've got some studies. If 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 I thought that this was, the direction that we were going to be talking about, I could have brought more information to the table related to that. Yeah, I feel like it's really a seems like more like a Parks and Recreation Commission issue to sort of try to address. We should acknowledge that there's a problem, or that there's a. It's not as simple as it might seem, or the relationship isn't direct. But it, it seems it seems strange for this committee to take a position on whether. Arlington's playing fields, natural playing fields should be rested in a certain way or a different or another way, right? Like that's not that's well, not our so. issue, right? I mean, should we even have a section? I mean, let's be clear, the whole cost section was not was not part of our charge. 
And we discussed this early on. We said, we don't have to address costs, but it seems a little weird not to address costs because it's an elephant in the room. You, you, you can't yeah. really talk about the quantitative and qualitative differences of these two types of turf without also a cost discussion. So, you know, we, we essentially agreed we would engage in a cost discussion, but how far down that road we wanted to go was always kind of a little vague. You know, I think we do need to address costs. We are. The question is, this is even more a micro matter in that when you're dealing with um, organic versus non-organic. And it sort of came up because we had to just, you know, Ian brought it up in our discussion. Some of us brought it up in our own discussions. But I guess my question is, should we even be engaging in this discussion? About, I think we should have the cost discussion, but should we just be eliminating this discussion organic versus non-organic? Are we outside our wheelhouse here? I do think it's it it starts to go down a road that we haven't engaged in. That I guess I the, the other thing. Oh, sorry. Go let, ahead. Let, no, go ahead, Joe. I, I was just yeah. going to mention that you know that recreation is getting funding, or I mean, subject to the passage of the capital budget for a field master plan. Um, I forget if that's in. I forget the year it's in, but so there's. There is this kind of upcoming opportunity whenever whenever that funding is to kind of engage in a discussion about organic, non-organic, you know, proper field management or the, the our approach to field management, whatever it might be. Like, so we don't have to necessarily feel like this is the last time that there'll be an opportunity for a deeper dive on these topics. Is certainly Joe's Joe Connolly. So Dave has been trying to get in on this. Yeah, I think that uh, to remove it would be throwing the baby out with the bathwater and feels like, you know, we've done all of this work discussing the various contaminants and so forth. You know, we talked about stormwater and runoff and all of these other dimensions of a problem that this could potentially address and so I, I wouldn't want to renege on at least having it mentioned in the small way that it's mentioned here i do think giving it more context makes a lot of sense you know talking about current maintenance of fields and so forth and elaborating on what's been done and frankly i think what can be done better you know if we're if we're thinking about the alternatives that provide either more playing time or uh, just plain space for playing, then there are changes to existing management that may beget that without going to fully organic maintenance, without going to artificial turf. I mean, I remember looking at the public land management plan and looking at a turf maintenance contract and thinking about, you know, like maybe maybe changing the chemical applications would do something to affect that. Maybe the deep tie and aeration schedules and, and so forth. It's kind of painted with a broad brush was my takeaway from that experience. And maybe we could dial it in better and that would enhance the resilience of the fields and, you know, hopefully give them, you know, more playing time in the long run. So uh, I think it's a both and kind of situation here. Like we could add those few sentences either at the end of the maintenance section, elaborating on just what I described <clears throat> or at the start of the organic versus synthetic section saying like, this is just like one of many potential comparisons to be drawn from what's emerged from our conversation. So um, and I'll leave it at that, see how it strikes folks. Yeah, you brought up another point that I was going to bring up that segues into we have a public land management plan. 
And that public land management plan does include looking at best practices for maintenance of inclu inclusive of playing fields. Now, the second iteration is also going to bring in the playgrounds and other spaces that didn't get covered in the first version. But I think that this is a topic for the public land management focus, which was was you know was just completed. The first version of it was just completed and released um, not too long ago. So it's basing management practices on based on what it says in that report which actually does recommend that Arlington consider additional artificial turf fields. So I think if we're going to get into the topic here of maintenance and management, <laughs> then we need to bring in that aspect of it and the public land management, which we didn't consider it, I mean, that, that didn't fit neatly into our purview of environmental safety and health. And so I see that as an entire, that's a, that's a separate committee that's been in place multiple times. And uh, the, the work of that public land management uh, continues. So, I mean, I, I, I think it's not on our plate as part of this and if it is then we need to do a deeper dive and we should be re looking at at the recommendations of the public land management plan so it well, sounds like leslie you should support eliminating this section i do well the, either that or how about something that says that arlington should further evaluate the management of the fields and is part of land management process well, the public, there is a, there is a, uh, I don't know what the official name of, of the group is, uh, David, is it the public land management uh, group? Not sure what the official name is. I, I was looking at the study committee, maybe I, I, I can't remember it either. But there is a committee and, and there is a report and there is going to be another crack, another bite at the apple, CPA. As long as town meeting approves funding, CPA approved funding for public land management too, son of public land management. So there is a group with the focus of this topic. So here's what I propose to keep things moving, because I think these are all valid points. I propose there's, there's a section before called importance of field maintenance. Eliminate essentially eliminating the organic versus non-organic section, but taking a few elements of that and folding it into the section above. So maybe adding two or three sentences to the section above that kind of hits on these generic points about, you know, there's also questions of organic management. We didn't really look into them, but these are things for further discussion, as as well as the idea of resting fields. It was something also we touched upon but didn't didn't develop, but is, you know, part of a larger discussion for whoever takes the, takes the ball on this going forward. These are things everyone should be considering. Is that people comfortable with that idea? Yes. Again, so, public so, land management, we can look yep. at what the actual name of that group is. Yeah, yeah. I would refer to it for sure. I'm just wondering if, are you suggesting we remove the section that talks about the comparative costs of uh, natural grass and uh, organic maintenance? Are we taking that out or how is that working? I think so. I think so, but we're taking elements of it and folding it in a couple of elements of it and folding into the section above. Unless you're not coming, unless people aren't comfortable with that. David, I do see your hand up. Well, the public land management plan also makes the suggestion that the town consider organic management of grass fields. Yep. And so it 
just seems to me but that by the same logic we ought to maintain this section because the entire report is about artificial turf and the prospect of having it in town so if, if we're going to use the public land management plan as sort of the the crux for making this decision then i i think it's even-handed to include both i would agree with that I think we. I think Jim. Uh, I think what you're talking about is adding a, a few sentences or several sentences related to what we just talked about. And I think that would be great. But I don't know that we need to remove this other section. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I think we do. Well, then it's just very repetitive. Yeah. I am cognizant of the time. We're well into our third hour, so. And we haven't actually gotten to the recommendations yet. So, I mean, I, I know this is an important point. I just don't want to spend another 15 minutes on it. Well, I think, Jim and, and Natasha, you've heard the issues. I, I would rely on your, um, your knowledge uh, to uh, come up with some solution if we can't definitively decide it among the group. We'll take a stab at something. Don't don't hate us for what we come up with though. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have a sense of what you would all like to see here. And although it may not be what everyone in each person individually would have come up with, I think we could find something that will work pretty well yeah. for everyone's ex what they've expressed. And admittedly, this was a really hard section because it was, it was. not a lot of um conversation that we could have had. So it was so all this feedback is really good and really important. So I think but we never you know, really anyone... had these conversations right. before tonight. Yeah. So it makes it hard to yeah. We'll find a way to make the points without belaboring them. Or yeah. saying things we never really can honestly say we, we had discussions about. Right. So thank you for all of your feedback on this section. And I know it was painful. I think we should move on to the last final. Well, it might not be the last final, but the next section, which is the recommendations. Um, is is everyone okay with moving on? Yes. Yeah, okay, let's go. <laughs> All right. So findings and recommendations. I, my last page here. A lot of input here. Yeah, we got a lot of input here. Um, do you want to just open it up for discussion or you want me to go down my list here? Start with your list. Okay. Um, so... There were just a couple of minor, you know, edits from the environmental group about adding a couple of words here and there. Uh, I think environmental uh, undeniable. I think there was, you know, changing a word undeniable about uh, artificial turf. I think um, adding Where? in sort of. Where's that? Um, sorry. Yeah. This one here. So on the other side of the ledger, the committee members recognized the undeniable upside of artificial turf. I think the comment there was really just that it might yeah, be. It's unnecessary. I'm yep. fine getting rid of that. All right. Uh, I think there was also another one um, adding down in, just bear with me for one second. To the extent that future field planners choose Yes. Where is that one? I was actually going to go with. It's just above the uh, bullets. Every future. I didn't, I didn't understand this edit, Mike. I... No, keep going. It's, it's above the bullets. Uh, I'm well, sorry. In future, field planners choose to seriously consider artificial turf as an option. I in That parentheses, I'm not sure we actually need. The committee feels strongly the following point should be considered. That's the well. This is this is an important point because it's it's here, and it's also in the last paragraph, basically. And there were people who had issues with this, um, and yes. I'm willing to hear them out, but I'm also going to strongly defend these. So, um, I'll start by defending it, and then I'll hear everyone out. <clears throat> it was. My understanding that we were sort of saying artificial turf should be an option. 
but it should be a secondary option or a, or a third option or a fourth option. It should be the default should be that when we sit down and plan, we look at everything on a case by case basis, but the first preference is for a natural turf field. I, I didn't come to that that understanding. I didn't either. And and I just heard in the discussion today this case for like adding a artificial turf field in the mix might improve our natural turf fields. And therefore this would make it really hard to do something like that. Um and I think there's there's like a line about the default option and then this exhausting natural turf field options. I feel like it has to be site specific. It has to take into consideration all of the factors in this re report, but that doesn't mean you have to spend a really long time figuring out why grass is not a feasible option because we, we already know we're at our max with grass. And so so we want to be thoughtful. We don't want to carpet the entire town with artificial turf. But I don't think we ever came to the conclusion that artificial turf wouldn't be a part of the mix. And we, I think we even, you know, started with a conversation about MIT choosing to have artificial turf as a part of their mix to, to make the mix work. It's a tool in the toolbox. Yeah, I, I, I hear what you're saying, Jim. I, I think that um, we make it pretty clear that natural grass is an option we should look at as much as possible, but I don't know we need to have that piece in parentheses. I'm not sure. Uh, I'd be glad to listen to more about that. I did have some other issues. Well, maybe I'm a lonely voice in this one. That's where I am. I mean, I, I, I want our preference to be for a natural turf field. I'm not willing to remove the option of an artificial turf field. Uh, there are, we're going to see specific sites where it's not going to be workable. An art, a natural turf field is just not going to be right there. And maybe Poets Corner is one of them, right? Like it doesn't, I don't think it's a long process necessarily, Jill. I think our Poets Corner may be a very short process. You say, this is not a great place for natural turf but and you have so, to remember yeah. you, yeah. you sat through this committee i think someone who didn't sit through this committee and reads the default option is like a default to me is like a very strong word mm -hmm. and i feel like it almost throws it off the table to begin with and i didn't think that's where we were at um and i don't think i'm, I'm open to another word so but... i guess i was going to suggest after fully exploring Natural gas. I'm fine with that. Yeah. So because ex exhausting sort of has this, like you've 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 run out of everything else, and this is the only choice, as opposed to like well, choice. we looked at all we looked at the options, and turns out that this actually is the best one. But we looked, we fully looked at the issue. I guess that's. I'm yeah. fine with that, Joe. People are okay with. I that. don't know if others are. I'm fine with that wording. I just. I, I'm okay with that also. I just think that you take that parenthetical out. You're, if you're looking at options, you're looking at, I mean, artificial turf is, is an option. Natural grass is an option. There may be other options when we look at a renovation of a field. You know, we, we may not know what they are today, but there may be other options. I'll admit there's some heavy handedness in the way it's worded right now, but if you replace that with what Joe proposed after fully, well, exploring, after fully natural, exploring all available after, options, after fully exploring natural grass options, I mean, I don't, I not only don't have a problem with that, I think that's where I am on, on this because maybe it's not where anyone else is, but I would prefer people to start with, I don't want someone rushing to artificial turf. I want someone getting there after they really consider a lot of other options as part of the mix. Well, I think it's that crap. sentence right above that says that the committee believes the artificial turf should be an option for future field planners in Arlington, but is an option that should not be considered until natural turf options have been 
proven unworkable, impractical, or financially infeasible. So I don't know that you need the parenthetic in there. Okay, you made you've sold me, Mike. If you keep that sentence before, yes, you're right. You don't need the parenthetical at all. It's an option. It's in the toolbox. I don't know. Yeah. Our fields are already grass. I mean, how do you, how are we proving them unworkable? That's not for us to decide. Well, you're deciding that that's where you have to go. Well, I mean, I trust the decision makers. No, that's you, but Leslie, that could be you. No, I know that, and <laughs> that's what I'm you. saying. You don't, because you're saying don't that we don't have the capacity to make an informed decision about a particular site and whether we should pursue art if, after carefully considering options, including the topography of the site, the need of the community overall the need of the specific site, and we have multiple options, you're saying, prove to me that it shouldn't be natural grass. It's showing a preference, which some people- Yes, but that is what it. I'm saying. That is yeah. what I'm saying. I mean, I, I think, I think- Then you're not- You should start not from really, there. I think we should start really, from there. You're not really- Well, we're already starting from there because they're all grass. We're starting from grass fields. Yeah, but we're looking at those. De facto. De facto, they are so grass is fields. This real, is this really anything that's a change than what we're doing right now? Is this language really anything different than what we're saying right now? What we currently, yes. current practices? Yes. Because when we're, we're our, going to look at a field. Natural grass is the de facto option. Natural grass is the de facto situation. It's the current situation. And all this is saying is that that is the option that we should work with. But it, Marvin wants to get in here. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I again, I you know, for me, um, <clears throat> you know, and, and and I'm I'm speaking now as an industrial hygienist. Um, I you know am am not. I I have taken the position that I am not in favor of an outright ban on artificial turf, because I recognize that there are times when you know, it really ultimately may be the best solution for a specific site. That said, again, as an industrial hygienist, you know, the, the kind of health potential downsides of artificial turf are that I would be incredibly upset if I felt that people were kind of looking at, you know, grass or turf as being kind of equivalent, because I don't think that's true at all. And, I, you know, I think it's not unreasonable from a health standpoint to express a preference for a natural grass field. David? Yeah. So the my my reading of that sentence, the committee believes blah 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 until natural turf options have been proven unworkable and practical or financially infeasible. I mean what Jim said earlier about Recommend commission and others in deciding, uh, sorry, decision making roles, being able to make that assessment seems covered to me there. I I feel like that is the sort of necessary logic that you need to follow in order to determine whether or not artificial turf is advantageous over natural turf. So I just, I don't see the rub to be frank. I, I don't, I don't see how this terminology is at all limiting. I, I mean, I, I think it's giving due deference to the boards and committees and departments that are in a position to assess natural versus artificial turf and as Jim intimated, just placing the trust in them to be able to make those decisions. It does obviously sort of preference natural turf, 
as the sort of, I keep coming back to this phrase of first principles, but um, I'm going to use it again. That that sort of is the do no harm option, no change from the status quo does not beget the harms or, you know, other concerns, other things that we need to mitigate, uh, et cetera, et cetera, that have been listed throughout the study that precedes this. So um, it, it strikes me as a very logical and very deferential conclusion. And I, I guess my question is like, how does how does it not jive? On war uh, until the options have proven unworkable. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, Leslie, part of this feasibility study will do that, right? What's that? Like, any feasibility study would do that. If you yeah. go out and do a feasibility study for an artificial turf field, <clears throat> oh, wait, you just findings said... will be necessarily that <clears throat> doing grass in this location doesn't make sense, right? Sorry, I'm losing my voice. Oh. <clears throat> doesn't Excuse to me. what degree i mean that's a very what <laughs> the overall perspective is how how do we increase playability for the community is it we we had a discussion earlier yes. about whether it was about playability like in terms of Access. hours or conditions of fields all of it but that's not right. the only issue. I it's mean, not the only right. issue. So, so that's right. I'll make one quick comment and then Jill's had her hand up. I'll tell you where this language sort of emanates. I mean, what I don't want, because I trust the Leslie's of the world, but I'm not, we got to think about a time in the future where maybe you're not, there aren't as re reasonable people on these boards. And what I don't want, and I'm speaking just for myself here, is a group of people on a board with decision-making power, who they go straight to the artificial turf option. They go, it's a beeline. They barely even think about natural turf. And they're before we know it, the proposal's off to the races and they haven't really considered natural turf as an option. They've predetermined this, is, this field is suitable for only one thing, artificial turf. I don't want that. Now, Leslie, you said, sorry, I'm speaking longer than I should, and I know Jill's got her head up. You told me about your process at Herd Field. That, in many ways, is the model, where you said, you know, we didn't just settle on natural turf. We, we had an analysis, and ultimately, this was not a field suitable for artificial turf, and it was suitable uh, for natural grass. Like, I want that kind of decision-making going That's on. Right. That's right. It was a conversation. It wasn't a predetermined prove that that it wasn't proof that grass is unworkable here it was a there was a consideration for doing we're doing this field over we need to look at how we do this field over so let's have an adult conversation with interested parties because there were there was a sense that perhaps it could be artificial turf. The default was not natural grass necessarily. The decision-making process included the decision around what material makes the most sense for this specific site. Mm -hmm. So in the conversation, it was not assumed natural turf was unworkable or that artificial turf was unworkable there were concerns about what putting an artificial turf field in a floodway would mean and we had again an open conversation with the conservation a working session we didn't we didn't file notices of intent and get into the legal proceedings right away we had a, a conversation over both options there was no default to one or the other it was a thought process 
and a conversation. And this, to me, sets up, no pun intended, potential for turf war. Joe? So I was going to throw out a negotiating item here. If we were to keep the blue minus the parentheses, but we were to go down to after the bullets, where once again we say, nevertheless, the committee believes the default option for field should be a natural field, which I'm not yeah, sure. I don't know where we are right now. Attached like, to the so after the five bullets, if we got rid of that, because that kind of just like hammers home what Leslie's struggling with again like i don't yeah, think we need i don't need that we don't need the term default i i'm i'm willing to concede default if others are I, i'm it's and obviously a loaded even, term that that is not appropriate i don't even think we need that sentence and if i agree got, with that leslie i i think that hang on what what sentence are we talking about saying. the one you've yeah. highlighted okay like yeah. just yeah. end with keep the keep the recommendations in mind when doing so Right. And that, if you take out the parenthetical up above and look at what the sentence is that I've mentioned before, the committee believes. Uh, and I think then we've, we've covered the territory, made it very clear what our recommendations are without including language that uh, many people may feel is uh, unnecessary. I, I could do that, Jill. I think it just makes I don't know if anyone else I don't know if everyone else is that, I, I'm okay with that because I think it essentially I'm fine with that. Jim, I had another Yeah, Mike. Jim, if we're done with this particular issue. And I don't that, know if we are. Hang on. <laughs> I just want to before we jump on that uh I just want to be clear for the notes here what we're doing. So um, the last sentence of the paragraph here. on the whole would remain in place without editing. Okay. The next paragraph, it's the parenthetical this. would be removed. Okay. And in the paragraph after the bullets, the last sentence would be removed. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, okay. I, we can move on. Okay. Sorry. I had a question regarding the footnote on that. Are people page. comfortable with that? I, but no, the, the footnote we'll get to, and that's, but are yeah. people comfortable with that? I mean, I, you don't have to love the idea of what we just did, but are you, do you get to a place you're comfortable? Yes. I'm moving there, but I'm not comfortable with that <laughs> sentence that says natural turf has proven unworkable. I mean, is there a word you could substitute for unworkable that is a little bit uh, well I I think it, like it, unsustainable? No, you don't even need to do that until natural turf options have proven impractical or financially in, 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 infeasible, I think would I'd be I'm moving to a place of comfort. Just take out the word unworkable and leave it impractical or financially infeasible. Yes. I don't know if that helps. I, I feel like that's kind yeah. of taking it too far down because impractical is, uh, yeah. No, that doesn't, it feels like. Uh, well, it's unworkable, I mean. Having trouble. I, mean, um, I agree with with removing unworkable, but then maybe, I don't know, maybe impractical needs to be beefed up beyond just impractical. Yeah, I'm with Joe on that. I mean, I think but, I would. But I'm, I'm fine with trying to say it. here. I mean, there are some, there are some places when I, you know, I'm working. It just it's not going to. It, it's just not for whatever reasons. The, the landscape, the topography. It's just not. It's not. It's not only impractical. It's just you can't. You literally can't really build it here. <laughs> what about if we said? Have proven physically or financially infeasible. I think there's another dimension. Sorry, what'd you say, Joe? I, I didn't catch it. So, it, so it's have it end with until natural turf options have proven physically or financially infeasible. So the in, infeasible applies to both physically and financially. 
I think we're by limiting just to sort of financial or physical constraints for lack of a better term, I think we're missing a lot of the content of the report related to health and environment and safety and so forth. That if any of those concerns that we're recommending people explore, you know, somehow in the future they show their that the turf option, the artificial turf option is really not favorable, then I don't think we've captured that in this recommendation. Does that make sense? Am I I'm stumbling for words? Well, I think but yeah, but I think it's it it and I was in the same spot, David, but I think the thing is this is coming from the other direction, which is basically saying you would only look at artificial turf if you can't make um natural turf work. And I mean, it's hard for me to imagine a situation where artificial turf, sorry, where natural turf would be financially infeasible and artificial turf would be given the cost factors. But I, I mean, I suppose if there was just some weird scenario where it's like the level of remediation required in order to keep a natural turf field because you have to worry about like the dirt versus if you capped it and made it a artificial turf field may, maybe but i mean i think it's this is actually going to be i would i would argue i'm not trying to argue against the point it's it's going to be a hard that's going to be a hard bar to get over of like it's truly physically or financially infeasible to build an artificial turf field i mean a natural turf field right right yeah the, and that that makes sense but i i think we've done all of this work evidencing you know the pros and cons up until this point and, and to say that we should only consider, you know, financial or other kinds of impractical, whatever that means, um, aspects of the decision-making would be to set those aside largely and mm -hmm. think only in terms of, you know, the, the pocketbook or the literal lay of the land, you know what I mean? And it doesn't give us an option to look at, like, we spent a lot of time tonight talking about looking at, like, increasing availability and that there, there really is no option there because you can't say adding a turf field at Poets allows us to, like, have kids play more at Thompson because we can maintain the field better. Like, there is, there's no option to do that anymore. And so we we did come to this understanding that like maybe throwing a turf in the mix actually improves the quality of our other fields. There's nowhere. Right. I don't know where that is in this language right. of the statement. What about if? Um... I mean, Go just ahead, to that Jim. point, though, I would argue, and granted, I don't know as much about poets as probably I should, but. I would argue a natural grass field there may have been unworkable. And it was really lousy land. I mean, I, I'm not sure you could get a real, really good field to grow, natural turf field to grow there. That's, I mean, that's what I would say unworkable. I mean, there are going to be some some plots of land that just, you're not going to get grass to su sufficiently grow there. You there can get it to grow, content. but you can't keep it because of the use. I mean, we have grass fields. Again, de facto, default, our fields are grass. The the community has one artificial turf. Field. Well, they're grass. I mean, sometimes it's 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 some sort of green stuff coming up, but yeah. is it grass? <laughs> it's it's natural turf. It's natural turf. I mean, is it weeds? Throughout, throughout I mean, the community. I, you know. Would anybody be interested in? I don't know. I could be throwing a monkey wrench here. If if we take out the highlighted section there altogether and then just go with to the extent future, like add that sentence up top there, remove the after exhausting piece. And well, so I, essentially, I essentially just that, put this right there. Yeah, I think I'm I not think, comfortable with that at all. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I think. Guess, oh, go ahead, Jimmy. Oh, go ahead. 
Go ahead, Joe. I was gonna say, Mike. I mean, Jim. Sorry. I, I'm. I, is the the point you're trying to get at? I think, if and correct me if I'm wrong, is like we should start with like where we are now, which is we have grass fields, and we should install. So, sort of like, we should only consider artificial turf fields. Like, and this is a this is not an objective way to evaluate things, but if we sort of if it's really the only path forward or something like that, like that's what you're trying to get, right? Like we should, we should, we should default to that art to natural, but we should consider artificial turf if there's a really good reason. Well, I would go along. Listen, with... I've, I've already, I've already, I mean, I know I'm not negotiating, you know, we're all negotiating here. Right. But like I've given up the language on default. I've given up the language on exhaust and grass options. I, I, you know, I, I'm not being left with much of my viewpoint, I guess, if you eliminate that entire sentence above. I mean, at that point, I then I guess I've missed the plot somewhere along the way. Well, Jim, I agree with you, but I think that if you look at that, um, the the information above, the, the sentence above, where it says on the whole, I think that goes to some extent of what you're getting at. It'll go up a little bit higher, Natasha, to the previous page a little bit. Yeah, because it says committee members acknowledge that many of the health and environmental shortcomings are, can be mitigated, et cetera, et cetera. On the whole, the committee saw the benefits and drawbacks of artificial turf and it carefully evaluated them. And I think that last sentence, the one that Natasha suggested to get rid of, the committee believes, if you read the rest of it, I think it's very clear what the preference is for natural turf. And... Maybe that's the way to go. I'm not sure. I mean, I like Joe's really simple language of like there better be a really good reason to move to artificial turf. I don't, I don't know. That's the language we could use, but that's that's, that's the what I'd like this to say. <laughs> I, mean, I think, but and Jim, is that? I mean, is am I mischaracterizing what? what you're trying to? Yeah, but listen. If I'm a lonely saying... voice on this one, I I don't want to hold up the committee. But I, I, I'm talking about sort of what I don't want is for a group of people. And I know this wouldn't be Leslie, right? But we have to think beyond, you know, to future committees where there isn't a Leslie. I don't no, want. Don't, don't put it on me. <laughs> well, no, no. Because it's that, I have, okay, because... it's that I have trust in you, Leslie. I mean, I appreciate I don't... that. But, but the makeup want... of any committee should be guided by the needs of the community. And anyone that serves on a committee like the Park and Recreation Commission weighs alternatives we, uh, and should be selected to participate on a commission with that in mind. Well, that won't all, that isn't always necessarily the case. Should, right? should, should is the operative word. I mean, I, what I don't want, I mean, this is the heart of what I, I don't want a group of people who say there's a discussion about where to, you know, the next field to develop or redevelop. And they say, yeah, no, we're doing an artificial turf here, period. Okay, so now let's look at our artificial turf options. I don't want that. I want them to go through the process. And I pr particularly want them to, I think Joe at one point said, instead of exhaust, he said, you know, explore really, take a deep dive on the natural turf options there. They can look at the artificial turf too, but I, I, I want to know if, if there's a workable way to keep that field natural turf. And if Thank there isn't, have... then go down the menu and try artificial yeah. turf. I'm open okay. to that. And just to be clear, Jim, okay. I, I agree with you. I totally agree with you. I just I just trying to find a way that states that that doesn't I think what Leslie's maybe reacting to is it sort of feels like we're we're just setting such a high bar that basically we're almost de facto having a not a moratorium, but sort of a really, really, really difficult Oh, well, it's definitely not maybe a that's what we want. Well, it's not, <laughs> so. no. I, I don't think it's a moratorium, Jim Jim, in your opinion, but I think that this could easily be read as like so much red tape that there is just no way to feasibly add an artificial turf field when it makes sense for the overall picture. There, that's what you, there, 
That's where I was going. The overall context of the community. This is, this is looking at the micro issue and not taking into account the macro issues. So when a field renovation decision is being made, it's not just about that field. It's also about the context of the community. There's part of what Joe was saying uh, and, and bringing up last week when we talked about, um, you know, excluding East Arlington. W when we make decisions, the micro decision, and this deals with the micro decision, is important. But the context of the macro decision and the overall context of the community should should also be weighed in on the decision making. Do we have, you know, people are looking at this and saying, well, we're gonna have three artificial turf fields at the high school. Yes, that's the macro, that's the micro. The macro is those fields don't serve the greater community in a way that helps alleviate the needs of the community. Right now we have a moratorium, <laughs> there's that word moratorium. Right now our field policy does not allow leagues to increase their enrollments because we don't have field capacity. So a so a, the soccer club can't just add teams even if there are youth in the community that want to play soccer or we can't add sports we've had we've had members of the community co come to us to add recreational opportunities for a different you know, one, that's one of the reasons we're, we're doing biking at Hills Hill, because it was an underserved community, constituent, this, this particular youth group. But right now, we have a limit, and it's those organizations can't expand because we don't have the capacity. So in the overall context of how we serve the needs of the community, one of the tools potentially could be artificial turf. Does that mean grass is unworkable? Well, all of our fields are, are grass. So de facto, it's workable, but it doesn't serve the community interest in a particular aspect. Now, environmentally, that may you know there may be the sense that we should just stick with grass fields but that gets us that doesn't get us where we're trying to go or why we're even considering artificial turf well leslie i agree with you that the context is important and i think that the the what you're bringing up is is an important issue about access and playability but I think that the mandate we have is to look at the comparison between artificial turf and natural turf and to come up with some research and some ideas about that issue. Mm -hmm. We are not in this committee going to be able to deal with the whole issue of expanding more fields or getting more playability. That's I don't I think that's important, but not part of our charge. I think that uh, the the point that I, I hear Jim making is that we want to show a preference for natural grass fields wherever that's possible and reasonable. And if not, as it says here, artificial turf is an option that should be considered. So that's that's where I'm coming from on this. I, I see David's hand up. I'm going to suggest something, though. 
Let's see if this if this works. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm completely on board with it, but I'm willing to do it if it can break the log jam here. Um, that sentence at the end of the paragraph on the whole could be changed to say, the committee believes that artificial turf should be an option for future field planners in Arlington, but it's an option that should be considered. It's an option that should be considered as, sorry, I had this in my head now, I want to say. Option that should be considered after care, well, it's an option that should be considered after careful evaluation of the practicality and feasibility of natural turf, of a natural that, turf. Field. That language is much better. That's good, but I think we also say down at the bottom about the requirement to look at site specifics. And I think that, that combines with what you're saying, Jim. Do you want to read that again? See if I can remember it again. <laughs> the committee believes that artificial turf should be an option for future field planners in Arlington, but it's an option that should be considered after careful evaluation of the practicality and feasibility of natural turf options. The word practicality allows for some of the things Leslie, Leslie's been talking about, in my opinion. And, I'm getting better. And, I think that it, moving it from a negative to a positive statement also helps. Yeah. I think Joe put something in the uh, in the chat. He did. I I liked it, but I I, I don't know. I, I I like mine better. Don't take it. That's I, I yours, <laughs> yours is totally fine. Jim. I think that's fine, Jim. I would go along. I have no pride about it. <laughs> I I I would like to see the only considered or the word only in there. Because I feel like otherwise it's really wishy-washy and it throws out, you know, significant parts of this report that that talk about, you know, serious potential issues with turf. Well, we have an only to discuss later. So <laughs> hold on to that, Marvin. I'm not dismissing it, but maybe we just come back to that. I don't um, know if Natasha, you got down what Jim just said, but if you do, can you read it back? So <laughs> I got pieces of it. And I can I'm gonna say have it to, again. I'm going to listen to the, I'll the, end up listening to the, the report. The committee believes that artificial turf should be an option for future field planners in Arlington. So that first clause yep. is exactly as it is. But it is an option that should be considered, well, either only or just, it's an option that should be considered af after careful evaluation of the practicality and feasibility of natural turf options or just of natural turf i don't know yeah natural turf i don't know. we can, there's a one or two re redundancies there we i got it with, you get the gist of it marvin wants only after i'm agnostic on that i could go with only i i i, I doubt others beyond marvin and me will want that but I, I, I like that only a lot better than the only in the last sentence, if we want to jump to that. Do you want to jump to can, that? Can we scroll down a little bit more on the screen save? Yep. Okay. Okay. Tell okay. me when. Okay, that's good. Well, I think we need more. <laughs> more. Yeah. Are we going to the only? Yeah. Okay. So now the last sentence says this unworkable, impractical, and infeasible. So we've got to like ma make that match what's above. And then if it matches with what's above, I don't have an issue with the word only. I don't know why we have to say this all over again. I think. Yeah, I was actually thinking that too. Yeah. Because sometimes people just read the last sentence. <laughs> well, we can't oh, that's, do, that's, that's, what we do on that. <laughs> If they only read the last sentence, that's on them. So let's then we should just get rid of that sent that whole sentence. We, I mean, it's repetitive to what we've said above. Yes. Yeah, I don't think we need it more than once. Right. <clears throat> well, I think it's a final summation. Or, 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 or. or, or put the top language down here. Right. 
I, I do think there's and a, that way you can deal with the people that only read the last sentence. Mm -hmm. That would be okay with me. I mean, just kind of taking that language that you talked about, Jim, and kind of moving that down here. Ooh. Instead. Um, we could do that. Are we talking about moving it entirely or just restating I, I, it? Yeah, I mean, we, we could, I mean, if, if, you know, in the interest of not being repetitive or making people feel like we're not beating anybody over the head with it. Yeah. I like yeah. That. Just kind of stick it at the end and, and, you know, it's, it's clean and it's there. And I feel like it kind of expresses, you know, the appropriate sentiment. Um, Making sure to keep B as well, because I don't think. Oh we yeah. Have to no, no, we have to have B. Have Absolutely. Have B, it doesn't work. Yeah. B makes sense. Does that, does that work for people? To do it, it that might. Way. I mean, I know Natasha. We didn't want to edit this in real time. I'm not sure if you can, but <laughs> it, it might be helpful. For people, to, I mean, otherwise, I just don't want to like do this and then send it around, and people are like, "Well, that's not what we agreed to." Okay, let me see what I can do here. Why don't uh, Why don't we move on to the footnote while you're doing that? Because I, okay. I want to maximize the time. So if Where people don't have anything else, and okay. this, you guys talk about the footnote, and move I will to the footnote. Where Jim, I don't like his views, and I'll I'll say I have some very strong views on this one. Yeah, I I, I expressed the concern about this footnote, in that our charge from the town meeting was to do research and come up with some thoughts about the various uh, pluses and minuses, and we came up with a set of recommendations. What this footnote seems to do is limit the options that the town meeting can have um, assuming they accept this. And I think that um, it, we have done a lot of work in this committee to come up with information uh, and facts about uh, the various uh, options for turf. And I think we should not suggest that the town meeting ignore that information in looking at current or future uh, fields. I think that um, I under I know there's there's contracts in place for fields, but that doesn't mean the contract can't be amended based on this new information. Uh, so I'm just suggesting that that footnote come out. So I appreciate the comment, Mike. I have a couple things to say about it. And then I'll open it up to everyone else. <clears throat> First, I want to go back on the history of this. And if I get in this wrong, Jill and Marvin are also town meeting members, though. I can jump in. But I, I think I would be appropriate. It's appropriate to say it was a little bit wild last year on Warren Article 12. It was so complicated. And there were so many mo substitute motions and amendments. It took us, I think, over two nights, and it got so complicated, the town moderator had to submit a letter explaining sort of how you choose your own adventure in terms of if you vote yes on this, you cannot vote yet no on this. And I mean, it's in the record if you want to look it up. Um, that's not to say people didn't know what they were voting on. It's just it was very complicated, and you had to be paying very close attention. That's point one about Tommy. Point two is... The original substitute motion, this is going to get a little boring, but it's important. The original substitute motion from Beth Malofchik, which was for a moratorium on artificial turf, included an exemption for the high school field. That was ultimately voted down. A different substitute motion was approved. It was the Stamps-Benson substitute motion. That motion also had two distinct parts, according to the town order, and this was important because ultimately we divided the question. One part was the charge for this committee as, it, as we've been operating. That was part one or part A. Part B of the Benson Stamps Amendment was a moratorium, a one-year moratorium on artificial turf construction. Within that moratorium was an exemption for the high school. But the title of that section 
was moratorium. Part B of the, of the motion said moratorium. The question was passed, but it was divided. So the town meeting voted on part A separately from part B. Part A passed, part B did not. So what you ended up getting in the stamps, substitute, stamps, Benson substitute motion that passed, ultimately passed town meeting, was the creation of this committee without a moratorium, which also had, which meant there was no, any discussion of the high school was essentially taken out. Now you can read different things into that. As a lawyer, I would tell you the intent of town meeting, and as a town meeting member, this is certainly my intent, I can speak to my own intent as a town meeting member. I can't necessarily speak to the other 251 people, but I would tell you, the court were looking at this, I think they would say the town meeting, when they took out those sections, essentially was saying, not only did they not want a moratorium, but they did not want us touching the topic of the high school. Now, even if I'm wrong on that, this leads to my second point. This committee never really had a discussion about the high school until last week. Um, we never consulted with the high school building committee. We never asked for any of their documents. We never asked them to share their contracts. We really know very, very little about where they are in their process, other than that I know that they're very far along. And at this point, in order for any change to happen, would require a change order, which would potentially require a lot more money from the town and maybe another override even. We just haven't, this was not part of what we did here. And I think it's an honest statement in this footnote to just tell people, this wasn't what we looked at. This hasn't been part of what we're looking at. We really feel strongly about these recommendations, but this is all prospective. And by prospective, it, I don't just mean fields that already exist. I mean fields that exist and are currently in the process of, of being rebuilt. Um, so yeah, I, I think this footnote is consistent with the history of this Warren article and the history of this committee's work. And I feel very strongly that it should remain as is. I agree that that's what I felt like we decided in town meeting that this was a discussion of future field projects that exempted the high school. And that's, that's what we were in that series of votes voting on. That was the intent. That said, I don't think anybody took into consideration that, you know, 10 years from now, or, you know, there'll need to be in a replacement field there. And I think I that people said, you know, so I think that that's an important difference it's not this is not a field that's going to last in perpetuity i don't think this is saying that when the high school is replaced it wouldn't fall under these rules i think this is saying the current high school field is exempt from these rules is that is that your intent jim Can you repeat that show like i don't think this footnote says that when you replace the high school in 10 years that they wouldn't have to be beholden to these this this guidance i think it's saying the current project remains as is not that the high school in perpetuity right yeah the well high school I, I mean, it, says, it says future projects not yet in the planning stages so yeah. to me that would exempt you know the current high school field project i mean i think that's right, pretty but not clear. but not when we go to replace that field correct right. which i think it's important to be clear about yep. Yeah. But the point I was trying to make uh, earlier was that uh, the decision on what uh, is included in the the discussion is, or what the results of this uh, or how the, the results of this committee's efforts uh, is applied is up to the town meeting. It's not up to us. Right. And that's that's the reason I suggested that this um, footnote not is not is really not part of our job, except that to me, I mean, as I mean, as for even forgetting town meeting member, just as a resident, um, you know, I would read this report ab absent the footnote and say, well, you know, these guys are suggesting that maybe we should really think seriously about grass fields instead of turf fields. And, and ignore 
you know, the fact that there's going to be a turf field at the high school that's going to have to be replaced in 10 years. So to me, if, if we want people to look at this report and look at the work we've done, it just, it kind of seems, why would we not be consistent in our recommendation that at such time as the high school field needs to be replaced, maybe the default position isn't just throw another turf field down. Well, I think that's what we are saying there. Right. And I mean, it that's inform, why- it should, inform, it should inform the future, but the future isn't right now. Right. And I, and I think that it yeah. that, you know, this is consistent with our other recommendations and, and you know, the, the body of the report that, you know, think about this and don't just automatically, you know, replace like with like. So I, I think it's important for it to be there. Personally. Wow. This, no, la the language changed from the draft. Isn't that correct? There was something much stronger in the draft in this footnote. No, this is the first time this footnote's appeared. But this is the first iteration? Yeah, because we never you never had a findings and recommendations section till now. So um no. <laughs> I have the original draft up and this footnote is not there. Oh, what was I looking no. at? Is is it just me or is my, my screen has gone? Yeah, blank. my screen is yeah. garbage. I'm right. sorry, that's my fault. <laughs> no, no, don't worry. Um, huh. I mean, I'm looking. At... Let's just take a step back because I'm seeing some comments posted. I want to be clear. This committee did not look into the high school field. No. Right. We never we've reviewed no documents. This we've had no right analysis. Right we sure. have this has not been our focus. And so it is an honest to goodness statement to say that we're not in a position to to opine, you know, the the, the the high school field, like why why do we think we're in a to make a judgment about what should be replaced there or not replaced there. This hasn't been our process. What's the danger yeah. about being silent there? Because others are not silent. Okay. Yeah, but the point is... This is a that... live issue. This is a live issue, and this committee should not get sucked into a live issue. That's what this footnote is trying to say. But I think that the, the question also is, uh, doesn't the town meeting, don't the town meeting members as a group have the responsibility to say, okay, we've got this report, we've got recommendations, and here's how we're going to use that information. It's, uh, I don't know why we would want the town to ignore the findings of all of the work that we as a committee have done even though there's a contract in place for a specific field. Well, then we should have had a lot more extensive discussion about the high school. I, I don't necessarily think we need to do that. I think that the, the recommendations from this uh, committee, uh, especially as, uh, as it relates to environmental or health or safety, those should apply Townwide and for every project. That that's my understanding of our charge. David, so I we didn't look at any specific proposals. You know whether they were sort of just at the conceptual level or at the contractual level and. So I feel like this does sort of a detour, this footnote does sort of a detour to make sure that we address the one that is the live issue, as Jim was saying. And seeing as we didn't address any other site-specific concerns, I feel like we should be equally silent on the high school field as we are Thorndike or poets or you know whatever other project may be on the horizon. Well, on the horizon is different. The high school project isn't on the horizon. It is the horizon. It, it, 
it is it's it's the we're on the we're on the land right now i mean those right. other fields are very distinctive i mean they're they're they're, they're you know a glimmer in someone's eye the project you know i mean i i just yeah, there, there are there are i'll be there are no field projects of any type in right. the five-year plan right like so exactly. we don't have any field projects in planning joe wants to do this field master plan so like these are literally the only projects this this is literally the only project that i'm aware of that's not just status quo and i see leslie nodding so i assume that means the parks and recreation commission is you know has the same understanding i mean i i think it's fine to leave it because it's it's just clarifying it's not it's not attempting to assert any type of you know we don't have any real jurisdiction anyway we're just making recommendations to town meeting so i i think it's I, i'm i'm actually fine either way because i think the language in the main body that says future projects sort of probably is clear enough but if if you know jim i think if you feel it's important to clarify this with the footnote. I, I think it's fine. I, I, and honestly, I, I would say that this group, the Parks and Recreation Commission, town meeting has pretty much zero ability to influence what happens at the high school. Exactly. Campus, right. Like, like that is a construction manager risk project. If we even talk about reopening that contract, the bill the town will get will be enormous because they are losing so much money on that project because of when it was bid and when they, you know, priced their everything prior to hyperinflation, you know, after the early COVID days. Like, yeah. I can't even imagine town building, I mean, the high school building committee or the town manager wanting to touch that with a thousand foot pole. But, so. but Joe, what I don't want is someone saying after this report is published, Oh, we need to stop the, the field dead in its tracks because the artificial turf study committee said so. When oh, that's I agree. not what I agree. we said, because if that's what we were saying, then we should have we had a meeting talk where we about invited it. the high school building committee in and yep. Jeff Thielman and their engineers. And the, you know, even though that wasn't part of our charge, if, if someone's going to use what we're saying to say that we said that that high school field that's already way down the road of the planning and development should be stopped dead in its tracks by these recommendations. Uh, I'm agnostic on that particular point. What I'm saying is I don't want someone say, we'd never we had that not discussion. Make that yeah, no, that that's, I agree hundred percent. And if that, if we had had that discussion, someone was going to use this report that way, then we should have had Jeff Thielman in the building committee. In. Yeah, yeah, you're right. If someone, if someone else could raise that, like say we want, I want to do that, but it shouldn't be any. We should not be taking a position on it. Tim, I feel like what you're saying just now is different from what's in the footnote, in as much as what you're saying to what what you just said deals with the committee scope versus the political problem of I. Uh, the potential use of this report or the potential changes to a contract at the high school, et cetera. Th those are all sort of, of a different set of concerns from the committee's actual scope. So it, I think it's fine to say this committee did not have in its scope the specific discussion of the Arlington High School field. You know, we didn't take that up. And simply stop there because it's just, as I said earlier, I use the word detour. I think we're going into that political discussion too far, whereas our task is actually pretty circumscribed. And we can simply say, like, high school field was beyond the scope. We didn't touch it. It, it still seems like that's in inconsistent with our overall recommendations because i think that this footnote clearly is really only talking about something that's 10 years out and leslie made it really clear i mean the schools the schools the towns the towns um maybe this is something that you know is just kind of more applicable for you know somebody in the school department to think about 10 years from now you know i mean it, i it, i mean this clearly states we're not talking about anything that, you know, is in the planning or or already their stages. 
So I, I'm going to make a statement. I'm going to make this. I agree with the Marvin. I'm going to make a statement. <laughs> there are going to be people who aren't going to like this statement, but it's my view. If this amendment had had made it clear that it applied, that whatever our recommendations were to apply to the high school, it would not have passed. That is my opinion. Yes, I agree. Beyond that, we would have we would have operated the committee different. If it did pass, we would we would have started our discussion there. So I I did not understand in 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 any form that we were ever talking about the underway projects. And so if we had been, I think I would have asked for exactly as you're saying, the building committee and to understand what process they even used. Who knows? Maybe they did vet out natural grass and decide that turf was the option, but we did not have not have any kind of discussion like that because I didn't understand that that was our charge. Yeah. I, I will say, Jim, I do think the last sentence is actually, from my perspective on capital planning, is actually really important as I read it again, because like then we have something when when the when the high school when when a when APS comes to us in 12 years and says we have to replace this field and and we're all like, what? And hopefully I don't think I'll be on the committee anymore at that point, but whatever, like and we all react like, oh, we didn't realize we had to pay for replacement of turf. Okay, cool. Um, like this gives us something to tie back to and say, well, also, we're not the only ones who should be making this point, but like you also should really need to, need to look at whether a replacement with artificial turf is, is the right decision, you know, looking at all the issues, blah, blah, blah. So that piece to me actually is, I, I, I the, right, the more I read it, the, I actually think it's really important to have someone where in there to make make that clear to future decision makers so they don't think once turf always turf um how about this suggestion and no oh, go ahead marvin i was just going to say and that you know it might even be at a, as low a level as you know this field is going to have crumb maybe you know there's a decision that you're going to replace it with another artificial turf field but you're not going to use crumb, which may be the cheapest possible infill then because nobody else wants it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. What if we change the word concern to, so instead of saying the committee emphasizes it, so I would read the committee emphasizes that it's, oh, sorry, yeah. The committee emphasizes that it's findings and recommendations were focused on future projects, not yet in the planning stages. Mm -hmm. Sure, because mm -hmm. that's a, that's a, just a statement of fact. We were focused on those things, yes, as opposed to we were limited. Concern almost sounds like we were limited to you know, whereas it's more like well, this is the work we did. And then I think the second sentence could remain the same. Any field that's in Arlington was not our focus, which is just sort of a more specific iteration of this first sentence, and then. I think the last sentence has to still stay the same. Our findings and recommendations should inform future development of those fields when the time comes for them to be replaced, period. Well, or you, you could even make it stronger. You know, the, the mandate of this committee was not to address, you know, AC field or the high school or something like that. And, and just make it really clear that that's a carve out. I mean, it should be, it should be clear enough. But I mean, if if people, you know. Well, I think if if we if we if we're that strong, then I think we are, then we are sort of interpreting town meetings intent in a way that it could generate, as the some of the chat is demonstrating, could generate some you know pushback. Whereas right now, with the changes that Jim suggested, it's 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 a statement, it's a factual statement about what we did, right? Like yeah. we're not taking yeah. a position on whether this was intended to be carved out or not carved out, okay. what town meeting members thought they were doing. I was so confused by the end, I probably had no idea what I was actually doing other than, you know, consigning myself to serve on this committee. Um, but, um, you know, this is, so I, I think that's that's going down a path where we might be asking for like trouble on it for ourselves. Whereas if we keep it without that, I mean, I realize it, 
Marvin, I agree it would be stronger, but I think it's also getting into sort of political interpretation as opposed to just stating okay. the, Mike, what the committee just did. Okay, that's that's Mike, fair. how are you doing with this though? You brought up the issue. Oh, yeah, I I just wanted to be clear that what we're saying to the town is despite all of our efforts and work and findings that we're okay with crumb rubber going into those fields. Because um, I think that, as I said at the outset, I think we really can't ignore what we've come up with. And I think that as a committee, we basically seem to be in agreement that crumb rubber is not the way we th should be going. And I think it's up to the town to make that decision. I understand what Joe was saying very well in, in terms of contracts and project management and costs and all of that. But I'm just wondering if there isn't a way to split that baby in half uh, uh, it, with our strong recommendations. I mean, could we add something that's like, if practical or practicable or whatever, you know, to replace the, or to improve the infill at the, you know, Arlington High School, you know, that should be considered, but without really, but not trying to make it like a, you have to do this, not that we have the jurisdiction to say that anyway. Or do you think that is that opening a can of worms? Well, I think yeah. it's up to the town meeting to make that decision. That's why I was concerned about the language in the footnote. Um, so going so what back, would your, if, what would your, I'm sorry, what would your language be, Mike? What would, what would you like to see there? Just just so I'm clear on it. You mean me? Yeah. Well, I think that uh, I, I I would just take out the reference to Arlington Catholic uh, uh, or the Arlington School uh, fields. Um, I think that uh, it, it's a make, making a strong statement there about looking forward. But I think that if the town meeting decides that they want to go back and look at the crumb rubber or other aspects of the existing contracts, that should be up to them and not up to recommendation of the committee. Yeah, although as was pointed out in the chat, I, there's not really a, I don't think there's a, there's a mechanism for town meeting to, to put forward that type, even if they could have an impact, right? Right. Because I'm, I'm assuming that if anyone tries to use the, 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 the Warren article about extending the committee's term to try to introduce some other idea about artificial turf that Greg will tell them that's out of school. I understand. I think it, it, it would be helpful if if nothing else to recognize if, if, if in this footnote or somewhere else that the implementation of a project with crumb rubber uh, is uh, opposed by most of the recommendations in this report, at least acknowledging that. Well, I mean, I don't know if anyone's had a chance to read the High School Building Committee's submission to the CONCOM, which I think was a week ago. Mm -hmm. But they have a footnote about us. <laughs> um, and their footnote basically says, we've had no interaction with these folks. There's been no back and forth. They've operated in their realm. We've operated in ours. I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but, and that's accurate. That's an accurate statement. We have not engaged on this issue. Um, we weren't supposed to. Um, and I think what we're trying to say here is, and maybe we can say it better, this was not our focus. We were focused on things coming down the pike, not things that are right in front of us. That's not, yeah. I, I, I mean, I think, I think we're coming head to head with there's the practical and political aspect of this versus the moral. We're saying as a as a committee, no crumb rubber. But politically and practically, the impact to the high school, it's too late. Even though we should I I would agree with Mike that we should be looking at it, but practically and politically, it's too late. 
I would agree putting that language might help uh, in the, in the uh, footnote, if we're going to have a footnote or have a separate paragraph. Well, I mean, the problem is what's your definition of too late? I think it's way too late. Yeah. Well, I, but, I, but if someone says money is not an object, then it isn't, it isn't too late. I right. mean, if we want to have another override, it's not too late. Uh, I would argue practically, as Leslie said, it's it's too late. That that horse is out of the barn. Like, well, I, I think that I agree with what uh, Leslie just said, and I, I would suggest that at the very minimum, that kind of language could go into this statement. That's all. Yeah, I mean. So how would there, our the, results the building actually... committee is the the bu building committee is dug in on their position regarding artificial turf. Anyway, I mean their their report covers from rubber, and they're not backing down. So again, I think it's a political and practical wall that's been built let's also be clear they already have crumb rubber there <laughs> well they have it but they're yeah. replacing a field they are replacing a field so the replacement could have considered alternative fills but didn't well they did well they did they did and in some ways their reports not very far off from where we were, you know, which says these alternative infills are, you know, maybe it's a, a they're a little off from where we were, but it's sort of, you know, they said they, they're not proven yet. They're not as proven as they need to be for a field that's going to have to exist another seven to 10 years. So not necessarily something I disagree with, with the, or this committee disagrees with. Um, dug in with the rubber. Yeah, more than we would be, I think. But, you know, they've also been in this planning process a right. lot longer. They, they costed it out how many years ago? And I think... Yeah, I mean... Four years ago. Or that's something. the problem with... And so none of us are contractors. At least I don't think so. None of us... I mean, that's the problem with a long-term project. You have to make certain commitments early on and mm -hmm. stick with them because the change order at the end can be disastrous for a project. You have to sort of pre-commit on a lot of things that you might have regrets on later, but that's just, that's life. <laughs> Jim, the imperfections we, of, const of construction. <laughs> can we just uh, come back to the options we have for this paragraph or this these sentences? And uh, well, along with what Leslie was suggesting before in terms of recognizing where we are with the project, and recognizing that uh, the crumb rubber infill and other components uh, do not conform to what the recommendations are of this committee, uh, but we recognize the, uh, the, the fact that this has been contracted already. I mean, well, I, mean I, I had suggested are. something very simple, but I don't <laughs> know if it'll do the trick, which is just to say, the committee emphasizes that it's finding these recommendations. I, I would unitalicize future and just say the committee emphasizes its findings recommendations were focused on future projects not yet in the planning stages um keep and then keep the rest of it the same well i think that yeah you know i think the last sentence is important and um well, i think we should keep the last sentence yeah I think it's very important yeah, I'm not sure that we need that central or the middle middle session, middle section where it says any field in Arlington is already artificial turf, or is you know, that sentence can probably come out. At least I would suggest, but um not the last does, time. Does that leave people like kind of with the question? Well, what about the high school? Yeah. I think it does. Well, that, that let, let me tell you, let me, let me, that's not theoretical, Marvin. At last night's select board meeting, one of the select board members said to me, by the way, where are you guys coming out of the high school? And I said, uh, or she said, can I bring up the high school? And I said, I'd rather you not. 
Well, <laughs> and town we, council definitely did not want us to have engaged in a discussion about that. Uh, and school. I would just Our leave out that, that central <laughs> sentence that deals with the high school and let the town meeting decide which way to jump. Um, I mean, we can say it was not the focus of the committee's work. Well, how about this? How about this, Mike? Maybe I maybe I can meet you in a place that uh, we combine the first two sentences and streamline the second of those sentences when we combine it. So we say the committee emphasizes that its findings and recommendations were focused on future projects, not yet in the planning stages. Um, and then the last sentence. And then... So you're just saying get rid of the second sentence. That's what I'm suggesting, but I don't know if the group wants to go along with that. But I think that leaves the decision about whether or not to deal with Arlington Catholic um, or the Arlington, whatever. I, I think it leaves that open to the town meeting to make their decision. But I think it, I mean, I, I think it just spells out that we didn't look at those two fields. And that is an open question that, and let's be honest, those are the only two artificial turf fields in town right now. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And town meeting doesn't get to decide anything about those about this really anyway. It's just going to be no. a discussion. Right. right. Yes. I, I guess I was just trying to reduce the potential that somebody is going to, you know, start asking questions like, well, so why didn't you look at the high school field or something? Well, that was- Well, they're already asking that. <laughs> yeah, but, right, but I'm just saying, you know, this way it's clear this, you know, it's like, uh, this wasn't our, this wasn't what we were charged with doing. Right. And I think that that, that other sentence kind of makes it more clear yeah. that, yeah, this 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 wasn't our thing. Yeah. Um, we and, recognize, and kind of, and, you know, in a sense, it gives us a relatively easy off ramp, yeah, for those questions, yeah. And if somebody yeah. says, Well, what do you think we should have done? That's another story, that's a different question, yes, right? But that's a different question, yeah, absolutely. But what if we combine the well, I don't know, maybe this is unnecessary based on what Marvin just said, but maybe we combine the first two sentences. So the committee emphasizes that its findings and recommendations were focused on future projects, not yet in the planning stages comma yes. and did not and did not and did not include discussion of any or existing second. artificial turf fields in Arlington. I don't know why we're shying away from naming them. Or no we yeah. call including yeah. Arlington Catholic and Arlington Basic. Because those are the only two. And there's no there, you right. know, let's just be clear. But that's it. School departments and you know not within the town. Arlington Catholic Field is is not within town meetings reach. Right. Private. It's private. It's private. So, yeah. Well, but it's on town land. Yeah, but okay. Isn't there a long term lease? Probably. <laughs> I mean, you know where I come from. I, I liked this footnote, but I'm yeah. willing to tweak the first sentence and I'm fine leaving it the rest. I just I want to get, make get everyone to buy in here and I I I don't know if I can, but I'm trying. I mean, I certainly understand the desire to, you know, I mean, if this was a magic wand, I would just like wave it and we'd have a totally different infill going into the high school. Um, you know, but it's just a pencil. <laughs> right. So, you know. Are you sure? Uh, <laughs> near as I can tell, but yeah, I mean, you know, I, I mean, I think from a practical standpoint, um, you know, we have limitations, and and you know, if somebody were to say to me, you know, you know, Marvin, what do you think, you know, about the high school field? I'd say, well, it would be great if it didn't have crumb. Yeah, but you know, again, um, somebody is gonna probably you know, ask the, the school building committee, well, what would it cost to change that? And as soon as that number shows up, then that's going to be the end of that conversation because I don't think there's any appetite for an override for infill for a, for a, a football field. That ain't right. never going to happen. So, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm comfortable with it, you know, where it is because I think, you know, again, it says, this is what we did. This is what we didn't do. 
this is what we think people should think about in 10 years. And I think that I think that's okay. Marvin, that was all that was the only intent behind this, really. Yeah, yeah. No, I I get that. For the people the who today. say, and they're already saying it, well, where'd you come out on the high school? So we didn't talk about the high school. <laughs> right. Yeah, right, and, because you know, any, like I, said, I feel like and, right, and because the high school was was specifically carved out at town meeting last year. So it's, you know, in in a sense, we're kind of, you know, doing what town meeting suggested what we should do like don't deal with high school yeah like i said i think the last thing is really the, the heart of it to me because it's like then we're 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 being clear that this is not precedent setting like yes was it a mistake in retrospect to do crumb rubber in the high school yes it's one of many mistakes that the high school building committee made along the way but um the in my personal opinion um but you know it is what it is uh, but let's not let's make it clear that like just because we made a mistake once doesn't mean we have to compound that in the future. And so just because it's artificial turf with prime rubber now doesn't mean that that it gets a pass forevermore until the next time we let our high school fall apart. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that's that's the key point, right? Like, it wasn't a focus, but you know what? When the next bite at the apple comes, they really better listen to what we're saying. Can I suggest we change findings and recommendations in the first sentence to scope concerns future projects not in the planning? Where is that, David? Yeah, I see what you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that would be good. That works. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That works. That it's that it's scope. Mm -hmm. Which which and is it's... a cleaner way than my talking about adding the like mandate, you know so. That its scope was focused on future projects, or that's yeah. We'll, we'll, mm -hmm. Let's we'll make sure not yet in the planning stages. Any yeah, okay. So oh, it's right. ten forty, and I I really need to get going. So. I know we're in our fourth and heading towards our fifth hour. Although I think this is the last substantive point before we just get to a, right. what I hope is a five minute discussion about about next week's meeting. But I don't. Are we good with this? Mike? Sure. I can live with it. I can be okay with it. <laughs> we strive for okay. Um, okay. If there's nothing okay. more on this document, which by the way, I do think this was our best meeting so far. I mean, we've had some good meetings, but this one was really long, but productive. And I appreciate it. Was it was worth the time. Um, so next week's meeting, um, it's going to be hybrid. Uh, Natasha is, I think, has reserved a room at the Annex or Senior Center. Yep, it's going to be a uh, Health and Human Services uh, office. It's the Senior Center. It's now the Community Building, um, second floor, um, Health and Human Services suite. I will make sure that there's signage and everything, um, so people know where to go. Yep. Where the Park and Rec meets. Yep. So okay. we're not expecting. Well, no. it's hybrid. It's hybrid. So by the way, not all of you have to be there. It'd be nice if right. we had a majority of us there. I will be there with Natasha. But, you know, if you have to do it from home, that's fine. And we assume there will be people who will join from home. We will do it hybrid. Um, I don't necessarily want it. I, well, I definitely don't want it to turn into a forum type scenario where there's for, for and against. And one of the things I really like to emphasize as a ground rule, if you all are in agreement, is I don't want generic statements about turf. I want people, if they speak, to have to reference something in the report. Um, what I don't want is, you know, people on one side or the other riling up 300 people to show up and tell us why Poets Corner should have an artificial turf field or not. Like that's not relevant to our to our work. But you know, if you have a comment to make, and trust me, our report's broad enough, you can probably tie it somewhere in the report, but did you have to tie it somehow? Otherwise, it's out of scope of the committee. Um, that's one ground rule I'd like. Beyond that, I'm open to any other ground rules. I mean, I don't want it to be just we hear from speaker after speaker after speaker and we sit there like, you know, like monks um, <laughs> or sphinxes. You know, I'd like us to actually be a conversation. So someone speaks and then someone in the committee says, you know, maybe you have nothing to say, or maybe you say, oh, well, what do you mean by that? Or what study do you, you know, I mean, it can be more of a discussion. I do think we should limit speakers to, I don't know, three minutes or something each, but, you know, it can be extended if we have some questions. 
Are these things people are comfortable with? I mean, I don't yeah. want to. Yeah, I, I agree, I Kim, and I think you're going to have to set some very clear guidelines for this for the forum for the people so that they're not really forum, not a forum. Not a forum. Well, for <laughs> this, public input yeah, meeting, sure. public input meeting. You're going to still have to set some very clear guidelines. I don't. Yeah, you may have to adjust the time limit on the fly depending on how many people are yeah. actually. Remember, we, I mean, technically, we don't need to get any public input, although we've all decided it was an advisable and sensible thing to get public input and have a meeting like this. But, um, and, you know, I, I, I don't know how many people show up. We have to assume a lot will, but it may be very few. I mean, I'll, I'll be pleasantly surprised, you know, either way, I guess. But um, is there any more, I mean, Natasha and I can sort of, work on some of the you know, details, but were there anything people want felt strongly about? Is this really a, are they inputting? Cause we just went through the entire final draft. Do we really have intentions that we would be changing the draft or are we really trying, is it more like a Q and A for us to be able to clarify? So Jim and I, I sort of talked about, both. yeah, we kind of talked both. about this a little bit too. And, wanted to make sure that we had maybe 30 minutes or so at the end to talk about if there are any, you know, potential comments that we would want to reconsider. Um, yes. Sorry. Good point. I meant to admit. So because we won't have another meeting after that till hopefully the meeting where we just show up and take a final vote and then hopefully pat each other on the back for a job well done. We were hoping we would have this meeting and then reserve as Natasha said, 30 minutes at the end of the meeting where we stop the public input part and then say okay anything raised tonight that would change your views at anything anything you've noticed on your own since our last meeting you want to change speak now or forever hold your peace because jim and natasha need to go back and take one more pass at this um uh, you know and i you know hey i think we caught a lot tonight but the wisdom of wisdom of the you know collective wisdom of the town of arlington you know I'm not putting it past that someone shows up and finds something we all missed. Hmm. A mistake, you know, like, like, you know, the blades saying blades when we meant from Rob, you know, I mean, there could be something that generally, yeah, we say, yeah, we should change that. So is it a 7 PM or a 5 PM? Five. five. So okay. I apologize. There was lots of confusion with this meeting. Next two so meetings are at five. They're Back five. to the regular time. And, and then... Is there a is there a stop time for the public comment period for us to then move into our discussion? Well, we'll have to do like 10 minutes at the start of the meeting for our preliminaries. Then we would jump right into it. And then, I don't know, an hour and a half. I, I think we should be really clear to the public about that time because not everyone may get a chance to speak. Yep. The, or the we'll other be thing. Midnight. The other thing we were going to do is request that people, you know, acknowledge or or email us or register beforehand to let us know that they're going to speak. Um, maybe they get priority, you yeah. know, versus, you know, if we have time, we can get the other folks. Yep. But maybe those are registered by 12 on 12 noon on Monday. At least we guarantee. Well, we can't get it could be a ton of people, but, you know, we try to guarantee they get priority in terms of speaking time. And that way, if I have, if, if the room that I have is too small for mm -hmm. in person, I can move us down to the larger um, space. But we also really have to, you know, if we're going to stick to this, I, what I, you know, I, I think I'll try to be very vigilant. If someone just gets up there and starts talking turf is good or turf is bad in very generic terms, I think we have to say, I mean, like they do a town meeting scope, you know, like, what's yeah. your point here? We're not here for generic comments about turf. Or specific projects. Or specific projects. Like, tell me, you have a, you dispute our safety conclusions, you dispute our environmental, you know, <laughs> conclusions. Like, point to something. Don't come in here and just tell me my kid really wants to play soccer on artificial turf. And, you know, that, that's not, that's not a helpful comment. It does nothing for us. So we'll, we'll play around with some ground rules and try to share them with all of you before the meeting. I mean, we're sort of limited by open meeting that we can't really have a deliberation about them, but. And Good Friday is kind of a weird thing because like technically part of the town is closed. Some of it is open. It depends on how you work. My kids are in school. I don't really know if it's a legal holiday or not. 
<laughs> so I have to figure out um, about open meeting. I'm hoping I have until Friday to post. Um, I think you because, do. Check with Mike okay. Cunningham. But I think I'm going to check with Mike Cunningham because these meeting minutes are going to be tough. <laughs> but I will. I will get them to everybody. Promise. Great. Yeah. Um, I don't want anyone falling asleep on me. So motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Call the roll, Natasha. Okay, so that was Mike and then uh, Joe Barr. Was that you? Yeah, that was Shocking. me. Shocking. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, Mike? Yes. yes. All right. Natasha, yes. Uh, Jill? Yes. Yes. Leslie? Yes. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, come on. <laughs> All right. Got another Marvin. three hours in it. <laughs> All right. All right. Jim? All right. Yes. Perfect. And Joe? Yes. All right. And I'll just say confirmed. I want to thank our three guests who stuck with us all of the meeting. We didn't always agree, but your comments in the chat were really helpful, as always. So thank you. Yes. Thank you all. Have a great night, everyone. Good night, Good night. everybody. Night. Bye. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.